Welcome to Fire Breathing Kittens, a standalone Dungeons & Dragons actual play podcast. Every podcast episode is a separate, complete adventure, so you can listen to them in any order. We are joined today by... Tanager. Tanager Goodfellow, level 4 fighter, level 4 bard, level 4 cleric. Chestnut hair, satyr's build, and today wearing a tasteful yellow open style Hawaiian shirt. Dr. Crud the third. Dr. Crud is a 12th level doctor. He's not all confusing with 444 everywhere. He stands at 8 feet tall, 5 feet wide, because he's a loxodon. He uh, wears blue jeans, white button-down shirt with a red tie, and a white lab coat made out of leather that has a beans pocket and an addition of new addition of a Jenny pocket. And Olive. Hey, everybody. Olive is a bipedal crocodile. She is a level 12 way of the open hand monk. All right. And today, as many of our adventures do, we start in the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild Hall, which is a wood-appointed room with a bar and tables where the Fire Breathing Kittens can gather to find adventures. Where are you folks today in the hall? Olive. Dr. Crud. Oh, oh. Dr. Crud. Oh, 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 me, me, please. Oh, thank you. Dr. Cred is at the bar per his normal routine, playing with Jenny and having a pint. Olive. Is silently judging the person who has a baby and is drinking. <laughs> Tanager. Tanager is coming in from his separate property. He doesn't stay at the guild hall as much as he used to. Still comes in to pick up jobs and things. And is actively drinking, speaking with Curry. So I've been thinking about getting a baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right so as you all are sitting in the fire breathing kill guild hall a woman in her probably in her 40s clutching the hand of a young boy maybe 12 m works her way into the guild hall and as you can see on her face there's tear streaks and she looks at you and she looks at you guys drinking at the bar and she looks at the whole quality of the building here and just bursts into tears. There's dark circles under her eyes. She has long, black, curly hair. And the, the boy, um, sort of, she sort of crumples down and starts to cry and, and like, kneels next to him and, and hugs him. And the boy hugs her back and says, it's okay, mama, it's okay. All right, Jenny, well, you know what we got to do. Dr. Crud places her on the floor. She toddles over to the boy and embraces him, and I embrace the mother. Uh. That's very sweet. Um, and not at all where I thought you were going. So, <laughs> uh, so the the boy uh, sees the little baby and is kind of like, okay, gives gives her a hug too. And the, the mom is like, oh, please, can you help me? I need your help. Uh, to just a uh, point of order real quick, Jenny is half dragon, half loxodon, so she is like five feet tall. Okay, so he reaches up and hugs her, because cause he's not, he's, 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 yeah, well, I guess he's about five feet tall, yeah, because he's 12. Okay, so she, she continues to cry, and she says, oh, I need your help, fire breathing kittens. <sighs> What's wrong? Tell, tell, tell Dr. Crud. Well, mostly what is wrong is that I went first. I went to the Sentinels of the Owl Bear, and they said I didn't have enough money. And then I went to the Arcane of Vanguards, and they said I didn't have enough money to have help from them. I went to the Char Cloaks, the Moody Booksellers, the Sunblades, and even the Prancing Hippogriffs, and all of them said I didn't have enough money. So now I am here, my last resort. I come to the fire building kittens for help. Your reputation is meh, not so good, but beggars can't be choosers. I need your help. <laughs> my husband, my husband has been taken. And the little boy says, Sissy, my daddy. Well, I will sit here and continue to embrace you and try not to be insulted, but 
any amount of money is okay. We will work something out, maybe like a work release program, so you can get this taken care of. It, when you say work release, she she kind of looks at you, and she's like, I don't work, but my husband, if you can get him back, he will make a nice painting for you. Someone's going to work, don't you worry, Missy. Okay, because he's a so, painter. He's a good painter. He'd do a portrait of all fire breathing kittens. So, so what's going on? Tell me, give me all the deets and the information. Oh, and I do need you to sign this. This is a something I had Beans, our lawyer, draw up. It is stating that uh, you are who you say you are, that you are not a shapeshifter or an alien. And if you are, then you forfeit everything. And the way to sign it is that you prick your finger and give us a drop of your blood. That's a really weird. Well, but... it's been a really weird year. <laughs> <sighs> okay, I have no choice. I prick my finger. Oh! <laughs> Adding an inner self to injury. And she stamps her blood on the on the page. Olive takes the page from her very formally, lifts it to her mouth, and licks the blood. That is really, really creepy. <laughs> She's checking for shapeshifter. Uh, so you know how you can tell the difference between beef, pork, and chicken by taste? Uh, yeah. I, I sampled shapeshifter in missives from a corpse, I've decided. And <laughs> now I'm, I'm going to try <laughs> to guess at people's uh shapeshifterness by licking okay so i guess we should probably roll for that uh <laughs> yep <laughs> so dm what role would that be <laughs> perception so a taste check <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a run a taste buds check i would say nature wouldn't you i, I i'll leave you know i'll I like give perception. you perception i like perception because then it's like well, you know do I notice the subtle notes of shapeshifteriness? Thirteen. <laughs> Thirteen. So, yes, the blood tastes very human to you. You are you do not notice any nefarious notes of shapeshifting. Got it. I nod officially and hand the form to Doctor Crud the Third as if this was part of our normal process. <laughs> because it is now. Oh, it is now. <laughs> it's so weird. Um. All right, so she um, she says, can I sit down? Please, it has been a long day. I told you I already went to all of those other people who turned me away. Yeah, of course. Okay. I ain't going to stop okay. you. It's a free country. She goes over to a table, and she, she pulls you guys over, and she says, listen, the other day, my husband, he is a painter. I told you, he does portraiture for the noble families of Nicomore. And uh, he was uh, doing a painting for uh, his name. His name is Giuseppe. Giuseppe Matacci. I am Stefania, his wife. This is his son of Vincenzo. And uh, so the other day, a lord, a noble, he come by his name Dorian Bartleby. He come by and he say, my husband, he has to paint him. Okay? So my husband, he paint him. He a very good painter. He come down. The lighting was nice. He do a very good job. Paint him. After a few days, he come back. He pick up the painting. He leave. He seem okay. Everything okay. Then, the next day, he come back. Three big guys come with him. Take my husband. Pull him out of the out of the art studio that we have in the loft. You know. Pull him out. Drag him down the street. Take him away. My son, my son, he thinks so fast. I just cry. I cry in the kitchen. But my son, he thinks so fast. He's a very smart boy, you know. He's, he take, he follow, he follow the, those men who took my husband, Giuseppe. And he followed them into half-elf town. And in a half-elf town, he saw them go in to one of the laundromats down there, you know. And uh, he followed him and heard 
overheard them talking about the painting and something about the painting being change face. I don't know. He said it changed the face. I understand. I asked him. He said, I don't know, Mama. He said it just changed face. And he get, uh, and the men, they treated my husband very bad, and now they no let him out of the laundromat. Tanager, what do you think? I think we should do whatever possible to get this rude, crying woman out of our building as quickly as humanly able, or satyrly, or lizard person, or, you know, various fantasy race available. Tanny, Tanny, what the... What is wrong with you? That is very rude. Oh, I'm so sorry that our, her last option of adventuring groups is being a little bit curt. The fact that she actively mentioned multiple times we have a bad reputation. Well, you don't have the best reputation. I'm not trying to be mean. It's just the truth. You see, you on the ye old Yelp is not a good. <laughs> we have a low Yelp rating. Is that because we keep tasting people's blood? <laughs> it is a kind of a turnoff. <laughs> w- when do we start doing blood magic? Did I miss the memo? <laughs> oh, it's not magic. I'm not magical at all. It's not blood magic. Uh, it's just blood tasting. Yeah. Like wine tasting, but for but people. with blood. <laughs> well, with as not. many people who pass themselves off as somebody else. You know, this is just ridiculous now. So, yeah, we got we to gotta do something. And this is what we're doing. Yeah, we have an unresolved changeling problem. <laughs> and alien now, apparently. Yeah, it was after the aliens that I was like, hmm. Okay, we need to circle back and I need to get an update on what's been going on at the guild. <laughs> oh. And you need to be nicer to people. Apparently, Tanager has missed one too many meetings. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so if we get separated, the code word is parakeet. And if you don't know that, you're a changeling. Well, it's either that or I'm going to have to vivisect you to sh- take a look at your organs, and nobody wants that. And I'm the mean one? <laughs> well, I mean, there's only two ways. Yeah, so remember Parakeet. <laughs> she tastes your blood, or I vivisect you because I know what changeling organs look like. Stefania is, like, pulling Vincenzo <laughs> close and, like, ho- looking at you. Like, now... You gotta remember, she's a normal person, and you're an eight foot tall, five foot wide elephant man. And she's like, you're talking about vivisecting people. (laughs) She is like holding her child, and she's like, "This is why your Yelp review so low." (laughs) Oh, Mm, nope. Be nice. The tanager goes back to drinking. (laughs) Well, tell you what, we're gonna find your husband. We're gonna get him back to you, and then you're gonna give us a five star review on Yelp. Yeah. Right? I give you... yeah. I give you review on Yelp, yes, and uh, 200 gold. And a painting, if you get my husband back alive. Five star. <laughs> yes, I give you a Yelp review. Five star, say it for me. Yes, a Yelp review. Five <laughs> star. <laughs> how about we see how you do? Maybe you bring back my husband, he dead. I know give you a five star review. Yeah, maybe we do bring back your husband and he's dead. Yeah, give him a five-star review. (laughs) I'm just saying a lot of things can happen before (laughs) we get this five-star review. There's still time for him to be dead after we see what the stars are like. That's true. Anyone could die at any moment. And I'm looking directly at her. Okay, give you a five-star review. Jeez. (laughs) Here we go. Thank you, miss. She's, like, covering Vincenzo's ears. She's like, don't listen to them, baby, no. So, as I understand it, your husband, Giuseppe Matachi, uh, was requisitioned to do a painting for Dorian Bartleby. And then three days later, he showed up with large men discussing something about changing face. And now he's being held at a laundromat. That is about the gist I got from my son. Uh, Yes. Is there anything else that's pertinent? Uh, no, I don't think so. Not not for you to know now, no. What about the address to the laundromat? Oh, mm. Vincenzo can tell you. Si, si, mama. <clears throat> oh, well, Mr. Elephant Man. Tell us. Yes, that's Dr. Crud. Thank you. Oh, Dr. Crud. I followed him to the laundromat in Half Elf Town. It was called Mr. Tan's Sparkle Clean. Mr. Who? Mr. Tan. 
Tan. Tan. You know, like if you spend too much time in the sun, you get tan. Can Alrighty. any of our characters actually tan? Because Olive is a crocodile. Doctor, I don't think an elephant can get a tan, and I have fur. On your face? I just spent too much time indoors. That's true. I think elephants can get sunburn because they, they take baths in mud to protect against that, don't they? Uh. Yes, I do. Fascinating. Sip drink. <laughs> See, Al's not the only one who likes mud. Yes. Yes. So Halfling Town is it's sort of like uh like Korea Town or Chinatown or Little Italy, anything like that in Nicomoy. It's just a small district, couple blocks, where a lot of halflings have set up businesses. There are things like halfling grocery store or I'm sorry, half elf grocery stores and half elf laundromats and uh half elf traditional medicine places, things like that. Half elf traditional medicines, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I go there all the time, you guys, for uh, that special blood I drink sometimes. I'm l- legitimately concerned about the amount of blood you're drinking. <laughs> like, yeah, like, are we are we doing checks for vampires in the FPK now or what? Because you're getting weird. Oh, I missed that opportunity. <laughs> that, that, that was Dr. Crud's brother. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, and... Cade decided we would fight the vampires instead of become one of them anyway. So, uh, yeah, no, I just, I, uh, I'm a carnivore, you guys, and Beans told me to stop eating cats, so I've, I've been looking for alternatives, ethically sourced food that isn't gonna scare our good Beans friend. I think Beans' suggestion was that you eat dogs. Yeah, I think, I think I switched to dogs. Because they don't have souls? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's what she eats now. Yeah. All right. Tanninger overcame his problems with cannibalism and have your goat and eat it too. So he is just like, I don't, I don't, apparently it's not wrong to eat goat. So we can eat cats too, right? Right. (laughs) Everything's fair game and Nicomoy. Yeah, you should explain that to Beans. He's terrified of me. Well, Well, there's one thing of eating goat and then there's another thing of eating satyr. I mean... Oh, true. One's an animal, the other is a person. Yeah, like a tabaxi. Are we suggesting that Beans is a cat? Yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting. Actually, he might be. I've seen him just sleep on papers and push things off desks. And <laughs> Cats and Beans-type cats are more intertwined than satyrs and goats, because goats don't go on two legs like satyrs do and satyrs actually talk wait, wait are you suggesting that either beans or cats don't go on two legs are you suggesting that <laughs> that sapience is defined by walks on two legs <laughs> pedalism uh, well, and mean, intelligence f- from what tanager remembers of his community college anthropology class walking on two legs does have a lot to do with sapience I, I've, I've heard tell that two legs good, four legs bad, though. <laughs> well, um, crying woman, would you like to stay here in the house, or do you have a home to go to? You're getting our floor wet. <laughs> I have a home. And what's the, what's the address for that so we can bring back your husband and then verify the four five-star review <laughs> before we hand him over? Oh, well, um... <laughs> Yeah, it, I live in the artist district of Nicomoy. It's uh, the the house with the uh, the pink shell on the outside. You don't know your address? It's 73. Dr. Crud asked too many questions, way. <laughs> 73, I think you made that street up, way. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so that, that's where she lives, is 73. Dr. Crud asks too much questions, way. See, I know she's lying because that's my address. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, if we need anything or if we have need to investigate your husband's studio, uh, you will be seeing us again. Okay. Just to come by any time, I guess. <laughs> oh, we will. Yes, I figured. <laughs> 
I think. Have that review ready. <laughs> oh, I go home, I type it up and now. Um, so how do we feel, gang? Should we go right to the noble, see what his vibe is, or go to the laundromat first? He was last seen it. Or just... Or just what? Oh, uh, uh, some preventative arson. We have this woman's address now. Just in case, you know. Well, we... Olive and I do arson just as a last resort. She has not really insulted us yet. Just you, apparently. So uh, we'll we'll go with the arson later by if we have to. But I suggest we go to the laundromat first, because that is where he was last seen. All right. Well... So we do have we have more options than that. So I'll just list some. You list. I have to go to the bathroom real quick. Okay. All right. We could go to the nobles' home and try to like interact with them as if we weren't aware that they were keeping an artist captive and learn more about them and what troubles them and what kind of business deals might motivate them to release an artist. We could go to the laundromat and just uh, fight our way through. And we could also investigate this noble by talking to other nobles or reading a book of who's who in Nikimoy and finding out what they do. Because, for example, let's say that the noble is a chicken farmer and then someone lets an alligator loose in their chicken farm and eats half their chickens. Sounds to me like you just want chickens. I'm a little yeah. hungry. I miss cats. <laughs> Dogs are not as tasty. <laughs> well, we could do all of it at the same time. Tanny Boy is good at smoozing, so he can go figure out more information about the noble. You can go over to the noble's house and figure out what's going on there. And I can go over to the laundromat and uh, sneak around there and see what I find. Nobody has to fight. Just like arson, that's a last resort. I look at my friend who's dressed in chain mail, plate mail. You're clinking as you walk. What are you dressed in? My leather white coat. Oh, leather. Okay, all right. You've gotten a lot better at sneaking. I mean, yeah, if you want to split up and just do three different adventures and meet up at the end, we could. It'd be a lot of <laughs> listening for us. Oh, okay. that just depends on how the uh, the god of the episode is. That's true. <laughs> that big voice in the sky. Um, yeah. <laughs> Whatever you guys want to do, I'm down for. Tanager, how do you feel? Uh, a Tanager recently gained the telekinetic feat, so he's just having fun commanding things without using his hands. <laughs> he's pouring drinks for himself without standing up. He's like, oh, what? Yeah, I, honestly, I'm not super worried about this mission. Seems like it's just, uh, for the listener, I'm waving my hands in a very psychic manner. <laughs> um, it seems like a pretty easy job, uh, especially with the phrase change face being used. I think we've got a changeling situation or a doppelganger type deal. Yeah. So we figure out who the doppelganger is and then beat him up. Maybe he's like bad at changing or they're bad at changing their face. So the portrait is like a marked like, oh, that's not what this guy looks like. So. Yeah. And, and just to remind everyone, like we did have a changeling in our group, Kaihaku. Uh, it's really too bad that they died in the train incident on the day of the festival, or we'd have a changeling on our side. Like, it, it, it's too bad Mendex is so slippery that we can't get them to when we need them. Uh, to, but not all changelings are bad as a race. I haven't seen that. Yeah, Tanager shoots a look at Curry and remembers when she was taken from him, and is just like, yeah, okay, I guess that could be true. Dr. Crud holds Jenny tighter. Whatever you need to say to yourself, Olive. What if the leader of the HHO isn't a changeling? And they're just using their skills. Well, when I split them open, I'll find out. Oh, dang. All right, so DM, we've got a plan. Talk to me about your plan. We're going to split up. <laughs> okay. One of us is going to go to the laundromat. <laughs> one of us is going to go to the noble and chat. And one of us is going to go get intel on the noble by going to the Nikimoy Public Library and reading who's who in the noble families. Okay. Um, <laughs> who's, who's going where? Thanks for splitting the party, guys. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. We know it's the best. If you want, could you involve like a fourth or fifth person that we could go into multiple different locations? <laughs> that would be easy to keep track of. Anyway, 
<laughs> yes. Would you like me to send Curry on an errand? Yeah. Could you send him to some place that I totally haven't thought about, like the Nicomoy Library or like the Nicomoy Cotton Candy Factory or I don't know. I could send Jenny over to spy on the family. <laughs> I have a feeling that was a joke, but if there's a cotton candy factory, we're definitely just going off the rails with this campaign. <laughs> there, there is. You can't just. There is a cotton candy factory in Nicomoy. All right, there well. is now. <laughs> uh, okay, so who's going where? <laughs> uh, I guess since it's the most made up and shortest, uh, I'll go. <laughs> I, I'm I'm holding a copy of Who's Who in Nicomoy at the Nicomoy Public Library. <laughs> okay. Is that a good way to skip? Sure. So the Nicomoy Public okay. Library is a uh, a large building made out of um, marble with columns. It's very it's very old because uh, Nicomoy really values public reading and uh, public libraries in general. They have a great selection of all types of books, including the Who's Who and family history of uh, all of the noble families of uh, of Nicomoy. And so you come across a, a dusty tome uh, stamped with a large B that has Bartleby, uh, the Bartleby uh, family's history in it. And you read through that. So go ahead and make an investigation check for me. Six. All right. Um, so you are able to find an entry for Lord Bartleby, and you see that he has um, recently come to be the head of his household. His father died uh, quite recently, and he is uh, now taking over the full lordship position. And he um, he owns a, a shipwright business in Nicomoy. All right. I... Write that down and head out. All right. So, Next. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, all right. So, yeah. So, you gain that. And uh, so, let's go with uh, Tanager at the Cotton Candy Factory. <laughs> yeah. Tanager started to walk to the Nobleman's thing, and then, like, a cartoon just saw a sign that's like, Cotton Candy Factory this way. And, like, without losing stride, just started walking that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you. You come across the cotton candy factory and it's it's tour day and they the there's a a halfling who's done up in orange makeup and has green hair and sings a song to you and says, Why don't you come look at this stuff? We'll make some cotton candy now and sings at you like that and and invites you in. Yeah, Tanner just has a really good afternoon at the Cotton Candy Factory. <laughs> All right. He'll arrive to one of the other people, like, you know, with, like, face paint on and two big cotton candies in each hand. And is like, oh, what was I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, m meanwhile, the, so, Olive is at the library dutifully researching. Tanager is having a field day at the Cotton Candy Factory with the Halfling Loompas and, uh, in a very tall elf wearing a top hat and Dr. Crud the third, where are you? Dr. Crud the third pulls up to the laundry mat with his, uh, in his cart strips, all the bloody linen off all his, his hospital beds and walks into the laundry mat. All right. So, uh, Mr. Tan's sparkle clean is, um, it's, a one-story building that has um, sort of like a, a central tower that actually goes to two stories, but for the most part, it's just a one-story building. And as you walk into you walk into the tower area, and you there's a desk and there is a an an older um, half elf man sitting behind the desk. And as you come in, he sort of perks up and he smiles at you and he says, "Hello, I'm Mister Tan." Welcome to my sparkle clean laundry. Well, thank you very much. I'm Dr. Crud. Uh, how good are you with blood? Eating it or washing it? Yes. Yes, very good. I can get anything out of anything. You know, I actually employ magics to clean clothes, so you should be quite happy. Also, a, a small staff of cleaning folk from my community. Oh, okay. That sounds good. Well, I have all these linens here, so uh, can you 
but before I sign a contract with anybody, uh, you know, I run a free clinic and we, you know, so we are run only off of donations. So I have to actually see the operation before I, I go with any new vendor just to make sure that they're up to my donors, uh, expectations. You, you want to see me wash clothes? Well, I want a tour of the building. Oh, I want to see the operation. He sort of looks at you sort of funny and he says, um, I suppose. And, uh, he, he says, actually, could I see some credentials? My lab coat, just the right amount of blood. Hello, doctor. Plus my cart's right out there. It says Dr. Crud's free clinic right on the side there. What other credentials do you want to see? Go ahead and make a persuasion check. Do I get advantage for the perfect amount of blood on the doctor's coat? And the cart that says Dr. Crud's free clinic right outside? Uh, no. Okay, persuasion. Oh, yeah, that's a good skill of mine. It's going to be 23. Oh, all right. So he's definitely like, uh, um, uh, all right, Dr. Crud, uh, come right this way. And so he takes you into the back. Um, there's there's a door in the in the circular room that you're in. There's a door um, as you're facing north. There's a door to the to the east, and he takes you in a door to the north. Uh, and you go into a room with a wooden floor that is very wet in most areas. There are some brooms uh, and mops sort of walking around. They're on their own, you know, they're, um, this is part magic. And there are on the west hand side, there or west side of the, the room, there's six giant wash basin tubs that are all being stirred uh, by the brooms and the mops. They're sort of doing their thing over there. And then on the eastern side of the room, you see a, um, those ringer machines like that you would like crank with your hand and put the clothes through to, to ring them out. And there's a door. A uh, yes. A ringer. Thank you. Tanager. Uh, mangle. <laughs> and, uh, there's, uh, women, uh, from who are half elves all working in that area and draining the clothes, uh, down the drain. And there's a door, um, to the outside by them. And you see them as as they complete, they uh, you know washing. They bring piles of clothes outside, and he says, uh, "So this is the operation. Um, the clothes are washed here in the tubs, and then uh, my workers ring them and hang them outside on the clothes trees. It's just a standard laundromat." What about this uh, other door that uh, you steered me around and didn't didn't go in? What's in there? That's my office. Can I see it? Because I assume that's where we're going to sign the paperwork for the contract. Uh, all right. Usually we don't have a contract for clothes. I just give you a ticket. Well, I mean, this is a hospital. It's going to be a, quite a bit of stuff. There's lots of blood. Oh, so you want to do a, an ongoing relationship with me? Ah, I see. I see. We do work out discount rates for bulk orders. Yeah, Jenny, I know, I know. Don't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so he he says, uh, "All right." And he takes you uh into his office and it is you know, big desk, uh lots of paper everywhere. There's uh, a schedule on the wall uh that has all of the the different workers' schedules and and you know, one of them is taking a vacation next week. So having seen the quote-unquote entirety of the place, and having seen the outside, could I uh, think of maybe there being a hidden room where you might, you know, have someone tied up and trussed up and kidnapped? Go ahead and make an investigation check for me. Fifteen. Y you know, you're, you know, you're trying to map it out in your mind how big the place is, and you can't think of a place where, like, there's no pocket where you would have a secret room based on the footprint of the, the building and what you've seen from the inside so far. Okay. All right, so what's your price? And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, make the deal off off air. 
Okay, so uh, you guys do some negotiating. Uh, are you asking for a blood signature here, or are we just doing a regular contract? Oh, no. Everybody that Dr. Crud has to have a deal with is going to have the uh, blood signature. Dr. Crud don't trust nobody. Apparently not. Um, he is... So, Mr. Tan is really confused as to why you would want that. Go ahead and, and let, make another persuasion check to get him to do that. Persuasion is going to be a 19. All right, so he's very skeptical about doing this, and he says, you know, I had some bad experiences with some blood magic at one point. I'm going to hold off on this. Let's Let's put a pin in this, and I want to talk to my lawyers. All right, Mr. Tanger. I'll see what's going on. Hi. He makes uh, he makes the two fingers to his eyes and two fingers to his the other guy's eyes, and walks out. He's he's like just standing there, like what the hell just happened? An elephant came in, <laughs> wanted a tour, and then asked for my blood signature. It's been a weird Wednesday. So, uh, uh I guess we'll bounce back to Olive. What are you doing after the uh, the library? Olive returns to the guild hall and orders up a steak. Extra bloody. All right, Tanager, are you... Uh... Uh, Tanager will also return to the guild hall and like really throw open the doors with like a look of pride on his face and go, Olive, don't worry, I've returned from the cotton candy factory. <laughs> 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 Did you bring me cotton candy? Yes. Great. Go quick. Run to the cotton candy factory and bring back some cotton candy for Olive. Okay. Well, since cotton candy is on the way for me, I'm fine with that. Uh, yes. It's just in the carriage. Curry will go get that. Do they make blood flavored to- cotton candy? I'm okay with trying normal cotton candy, right? <laughs> Flavors of the world. Uh, yes. But really, uh, Tanager's trying to personally trend down the amount of just straight blood olive drinks. <laughs> and she has a diet. That's fine. Raw meat, totally cool. Just a little off-putting to him in particular. <laughs> just the straight blood. Why do I terrify everybody? Because you're made of teeth. <laughs> oh, no, it's nothing to do with the teeth, darling. It's just the sheer amount of blood. Anyway, uh, what did you learn from reading Elf? That's like people. But it's elf. <laughs> Did you uh, find anything about the uh, Bartlebys? Yeah. Their former lord recently died, making their young heir the new lord. And they own a shipwright business. That's what I got. Hmm. Recent death in the family and a change of ownership of the title. Seems like changeling moves to me. Something's going on. Um, yeah, someone should go speak with these nobles, or perhaps some nobles who might know of the Bartlebys. Yeah, that could be Dr. Crud III. Where's he? Dr. Crud? Door flies open, apparently. All right, I'm back. All right, so let's touch bases on what we are all going to do. So I went to the laundromat. I went, and I didn't see, there doesn't seem to be any... Not hide nor hair of the guy, but we still need to go interrogate if that's what we want to do. The owner, uh, he might be a changeling. He refused to sign the paperwork. So keep that in mind. Uh, Candy boy, you were supposed to go to talk to Dorian Butthole. Did you uh, get him? <laughs> what did he say? Uh, yes, <laughs> he wasn't home at the time. Uh, we should all go back together. Okay. Sounds good. Olive? Yeah. What'd you do? You went to the library, right? Yeah. His father died recently, making him the new head of the household, and he owns a shipwright business. Also, you said that there wasn't, like, a captive at the laundromat. Is it possible that Stefania and Vincenzo might have been lying to us? Should we investigate Giuseppe? I think it might behoove us, uh, I do have the ability to read minds now. Like, the tech, detect thought spell. I, I can only do it a few times per day, but if, you know, if we really want to delve into some brains, 
Let me know. I want to know. Are, so you're still in face paint from from the yes, cotton candy look, factory, right? What are you painted he, up as? Just trying to put the uh, scene together in my mind here. We kept talking about cats, so cats were in his head. So when he went to the face painting booth, he was like a cat. All right, you are a pretty white kitty. Uh, so do we want to go to the family or write to the Bartlebys? I think we should talk to a painter in town, you know, and ask if they know of a painter named Giuseppe. Hmm. Sounds good to me. Go ahead and, and make a uh, a general knowledge check for me. Um, I guess it would be history. Dr. Crud got a 12. 17. 19 for Tanager. Tanager and all of you guys know of a a um, cafe that is often frequented by artists in, in not too far away from where your guild hall is, maybe a mile. Oh, yeah. Remember that one cafe? What was its name again, Tanager? It's it's on the tip of my tongue. The Snooty Painter. Maxwell. Oh, sorry. Oh, the Snooty Painter. <laughs> I call it Maxwell's because, like, that's what people in the know call it. But it's the, the sign says the snooty painter. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Owned by Maxwell. I, I've heard but never met them. Yeah. Uh, lovely being. Uh, well, let's head out, go get some croissants, and then, uh, yeah. All right. Olive heads to the snooty painter. The Snooty Painter is a two-story um, building. It, it is a Tudor-style home that has been converted into um, a, a cafe, and it is the second floor has a bit of a gallery where uh, local artists show off their various works of art. And Maxwell, the owner, is uh, behind the counter um, polishing a tea set that's silver. All right, before we talk to you, I'm going to need you to sign this. This is a document that says that you affirm that you are who you say you are, that you are not a changeling or alien. Please go ahead and uh, pick your finger and sign it in blood. Oh, this is cool. Is this a is this a uh, an art piece you're doing here? And he like, absolutely. It's just like totally fine. Pricking his finger and stamping it on there. Is this some performance art? This is to make sure that I don't have to hurt you. Ooh, I love this. Uh, Olive accepts the paper and gives it a lick. Oh, how delightfully creepy. What does it taste like? What uh, race is this person? Uh, so this this person is a, is a human, uh, pretty standard human. And uh, he's, he's about five foot ten, uh, thin build, salt and pepper hair, and he tastes just like a human to you. Mm. Writing down my notes for the person tastes like human. Got it. <laughs> Actually, he tastes like chicken. Um, everything I, does. Everything. <laughs> it's all of it, except for changelings. Alligator also kind of tastes like chicken. By the way. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. Oh, I I love your cat makeup. He says to Tanager. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Maxwell. I got it done at the Count and Candy Factory. It's tour day today. Oh, it's the tasting day today. I love it there. Uh, you should swing by. Hey, uh, just out of curiosity, are you familiar with an artist named Giuseppe Matachi? Oh, yes, I know Giuseppe. He's in here quite frequently. Uh, interesting. Do you have any of his paintings hanging up in the gallery? <laughs> no, I wish... His art sells for far too much for my gallery upstairs. It's just for local artists getting their start. You understand, he's a famous portraiter. Oh, really? So he makes good money? He does fairly well. His paintings are quite accurate. They always seem to capture the essence of his subject. Alas, he has tried to branch out into other forms of art, but... Uh, suffice it to say, portraiture is where he stands. Mm -hmm. Now, you use the phrase really captures the soul of the artist, and I will remind you, we live in a magical fantasy world. <laughs> Do you think he could possibly be actually taking souls or anything like that? Does he seem the magical type, or...? 
I, if I said soul, I misspoke. I meant the essence. I believe I oh. said the essence. Well, look, I'm a cleric. From a theological standpoint, the essence, the soul, the spirit, it's all it's sort of interchangeable to me, personally, but uh, point... N- no, this is quite in an art way. I didn't mean it in any way creepy. I get that. I get that. And Tanny, you're not that type of cleric. Thank you, Dr. Crud, that, but that is absolutely my catchphrase. I would ask you not to use it. <laughs> <laughs> also, noted, if this guy's really a successful artist, why are we only getting 200 gold for his return? Yeah. I, I'll say that a little bit hush to, like, the group. That's a great thought. And I turn to Maxwell and I say, I'm quite wealthy, which I am. If I were, you know, as an alligator person, it's it's very difficult for people to see me and be able to paint anything other than what their preconception tells them I am. I would really value someone who could look at me and really see me for me. I would like to hire this Giuseppe to paint a truly beautiful painting of an alligator person. Um, no, I bet I he'd paint you like a French contact? girl. What? I said, I bet he'd paint you like a French girl. All right, cool it off, Maxwell. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's an interesting person to say that to someone who just licked their blood. Um, You know, (laughs) you got some. uh, He's still pretty much under the impression that this is a performance piece. So he he's he spent too much time in the art world to really take anything super (laughs) seriously anymore. Yeah, fair. I mean, an alligator, an elephant, and a satyr walk into a bar, right? Uh, (laughs) Yes, and one of them has their face painted like a pretty kitty cat. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, okay, so how do I hire Giuseppe? Oh, well, he's... You could go to his home. Uh, I believe he's on... uh, Dr. Crud asked too many questions, Lane? Uh, Or was it Way? There's so many of those street names, it's hard to keep them straight in my mind. But, um, you could hire him out directly, yes. Thanks, I'll head there. Hmm. I haven't seen him for a few days. He usually comes in here. He plays dice in the corner. With who? (laughs) Whoever will play with him. Does he lose a lot of money in the, uh, the dice corner place? Let's just say uh, all of his luck points were spent... In in the portraiture skill and not in the dice skill. <clears throat> oh, so this could be a debt thing, guys. That would explain why they only offered to pay us 200 gold. So, who does he usually play with? What's their address? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Some, some, Sometimes he plays with regular patrons, and other times he just... Plays with anyone who happens into the gallery. Any, like, mafioso types? Oh, no, they don't seem very interested in art. Hmm. Yeah, but gambling. This This is, like, a perfect gambling den. Um, I... No one that I would... Describe a mafioso for me, would you? Rich looking? Oh, no. Like, more upscale for your establishment? With these, you know... Things you call paintings. <laughs> the the walls are all arrayed with like a tons of different paintings, and there's also um, sculptures. There's a a satyr like peeing into a fountain. Uh, there's a, a loxodon <laughs> so- sculpture with its trunk way up in the air. Um, there are no crocodile sculptures. Racist. Racist. Hey, people don't see us as beautiful. I know. I know. It took a while for me to get used to this myself. I shrugged my skin, you know. I think you're beautiful, Olive. Thank you. (laughs) I think you're adorable. Hey, that's a new one. No one's ever called me that. Oh, you. Your boyfriend doesn't call you adorable? Mm, Adorable, no. Pretty, yes. Richard. Oh, I mean, Richard. (laughs) Richard, yeah. Anyway, so uh, thank you for all of your help. You've been super useful. If you meet any painters who are available who could, you know, do me justice, let me know. All right. Well, guys, you want to head out? Mm. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we're outside the snooty painter. Okay. 
Tanny, is it me or was all those paintings and sculptures just absolute garbage? Oh, yeah. Uh, anyone in the art community is absolute trash. Oh, okay. But, <laughs> no, we were definitely of the same mind in this. There's nothing I abhor more than an artist. Uh, something is really fishy about this whole situation, and I can't quite put my finger on it. Olive? Uh, I mean, I would love fish, but... Oh, yeah, Dr. Crud, don't you have, like, fish on you? Oh, I always got fish on me, but that is reserved for beans. Of course. That's, that's but, the... <laughs> that could be what smells fishy about all this. <laughs> oh. It's, 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 uh, it's turkeyed. It's jerkied. <laughs> it's jerked fish. I mean, it could be. No one wants to know what you do with fish. Well, I have to because it has to last because only beans eats it. And yeah, I've got a great recipe for you guys. So you take some of those frozen, individually sealed, boneless, skinless fillets of fish that you can get at, like, you know, your local uh, mall mart. You put them into half Worcestershire sauce, half soy sauce for like 6 to 24 hours, and then put them in your uh, oven at like the lowest setting for a few hours. They turn into jerky. It's really nice. You should try that. That's exactly what I do. You heard it here first, folks, on the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast and cooking show. (laughs) Olive is a chef. (laughs) The cooking corner with Olive. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so should we go see if Dorian Butthole is uh, back at home yet or not? Sure. Yeah. Just give me a signal when you'd like me to turn my detect thoughts on. I will point right at your head and tap you in the forehead. That will be your signal. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, Olive, you know where Bartleby lives. Um, The the Bartleby estate, it's... um, it's in town on a it, it's on like Capitol Hill, basically like a really nice part of town. Uh, lots of stately mansions and uh, larger estates with with big green spaces. And uh, the Bartleby's home is uh, fits in very well in this area. It's a uh, three story stone house with um, a blue shingled roof. It has a large yard with uh, topiaries in it, and the theme of the topiaries are all nautical, so there's like an anchor and a kraken and a boat and all all, all that in the yard, and and you see um, there's a a low stone wall uh, around the yard with with a gate. I lead you guys there. Oh, I'm sure Tanny knew exactly where this was, too. I mean, he was just here. Yes. I was. Still actively wearing face paint. Do you still have, like, <laughs> the balloons and stuff? Or? Yeah. I have a big balloon that says, I went to the cotton candy factory, <laughs> and all I got was this crappy balloon. <laughs> Dr. Crud is so used to his eccentricity with his dress and stuff, he does, just doesn't even notice. Oh, yeah. Is the face paint new? Uh, it looks nice on you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm a kitty cat. You look delicious. I mean, amazing. (laughs) Olive, you look delicious. Stop. (laughs) We have a mission to do. (laughs) All right, guys, you can flirt later. Let's go ahead and knock on this here door. Uh, Knock, knock, um, (laughs) knock. All right. Door has been knocked on. The door has been knocked on. As so, the you knock. There's a uh, a ship shaped knocker on the door, and you rap on that. And uh, in just a moment, a, an elderly man dressed up quite nicely says, mm, "Yes, may I help you?" Lorraine Butthole, please. Um, Mr. Bartle, Lord Bartleby is indisposed at the moment for unannounced guests. Well, I am Dr. Crud. I have now been announced. Dorian, please. I'm sorry, Mr. Lord Bartleby is not accepting visitors at the moment. You will need to make an appointment if you wish to procure a ship. Look, I don't need a ship. I'm doing a house call. He called me for medical services. Now, 
I can either help him or I can just get the hell out of here because I don't, I don't care. So which one do you want? You want a healthy boss or do you want him or do you want me to leave and he can die? Um, why don't you do an intimidation for me? Okay. Uh, that's not as good as my persuasion. Why can't I do persuasion? I haven't threatened him. <laughs> I feel like you I'm were being so nice. You're not. I feel you're like not. you were sort of threatening no. him. <laughs> Does anybody want to give me a hand? No, you, no. you're kind of a jerk. <laughs> you were immediately rude to a nobleman we need to ingratiate ourselves with. Yeah, was... And you called me mean earlier. No, that was just the help. It's just the help. No, this is just the help. Yeah, he's he's correct. Yeah. That's going to be a 16. Oh, okay. So he uh, sort of nervously looks around and he's like, uh, one moment, please. And shuts the door and locks. You hear the lock click over. And <laughs> oh, God. a few minutes, a few minutes go by. You're sit. you're standing on the front porch and um, the, the, the butler comes back and, mm, yeah, Mr. Bartleby will see you in the drawing room. And Thank you. And he uh, he leads you into the house. This is a beautiful home. Uh, this, it's all, like, teak, right? Because it's a shipwright family, so they, they nothing but the best for them. And it's uh, all, like, polished, oiled wood. And there's some carvings around. Uh, there's a, a one of those grand staircases that kind of goes up and and to the left, um, you know, getting larger as it gets down to the bottom, like that you would see someone walk down, like to go into a ball or something, right? And um, so he leads you um, past the staircase over to the uh, west wing of the house and into a large um, room with a few couches and chairs a nice fireplace and there's you notice there are uh, paintings of the Bartleby family that go back uh, at least six generations uh can we clock like the newest one the one that potentially Giuseppe would have painted there's a space where there's like a um a nameplate that is new uh for Lord Dorian Bartleby but the there's no painting there yet. I raise like suspicious eyebrows to my party members and sort of like, actually, no, I have, uh, I'm telepathic. I just send a message spell to both of you in your heads. Like, Hey, check out the painting. Like it should have been done by now and they're not hanging it up. Can we send messages back? <laughs> no, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear a creepy satyr in your ear and that's it. Or in your mind. <laughs> um, but, you know, we can try to signal each other other ways. But, like, you know, I just wanted to note it. Mm. Noted. Dr. Kretz says out loud, noted. <laughs> the Tandra forgets where he's at and also goes, noted. <laughs> uh, so the, um, the butler sort of looks at you all really weird and, he, and he's like, Lord Bartleby will be in directly. And he, uh, if you'll excuse me, and and sort of backs out of the room, and uh, you, in a few minutes, uh, you or you guys have a few minutes before Bartleby comes in. So if there's anything you'd like to do, now Tanny, if you still feel like you want to do a arson, I think this is the perfect house to do it with. I mean, I'm always down for some light arson. Uh, let's see what we can get out of this guy. Oh, and we should probably see if he has any connection to that laundromat. Because if he has any vested interest in there, there's something definitely fishy going on between the Bartlebys and our missing artist. Yeah, I got us in. I'm going to do a physical examination, and you guys can get hit all the information you want out of him. I have a question. Sure. What's the furniture like in this room? Um, so you've got, uh... Wooden, uh, but cushioned couches. So like the the frames are all like kind of a dark wood. Uh, the with red cou red cushions and backs, and uh, there's a few like wing chairs that are the same sort of red, like kind of crushed velvet style. And there's a large table with some papers spread out on it. Uh, without messing the desk up too much. 
uh, Tanji would just like to sort of peruse the papers. Okay, so you see some, um, you see some ship plans, and um, you see the death notice from the local um, paper of his father that's been clipped out and um, sat on the desk and. Yeah, it's it's mostly just work related papers. What's the gap size between the couch and the floor? Um <laughs> so there's no skirt on the couch. It's just like bare legs. It's uh two and a half feet. Gap between the couch and the floor? I I'm not sure what you're asking. Like it's between the bottom of the crocodile- couch were to crawl under the couch would they fit oh yeah like you would see because there's it's not like a couch that has a couch cover on it there's yeah yeah so like you could just be seen right, right but would i fit down there uh it's it's a love seat so i think you'd be too long but you would fit under it height wise if you were on your belly okay all right um I can curl my tail up alongside my body. Would I? Could I possibly condense myself so I would fit under the love seat? Um, make a de- uh, dexterity or uh, acrobatics check. Contortionist. Eighteen. Is, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can. You can squeeze under the couch. You're under the couch. Okay. I'm under the couch, and I'd like to prepare a reaction. All right. When I hear footsteps approaching the door to this room, I want to dust of disappearance myself. Ah, okay. Interestingly enough, you start to hear footprints, or uh, footprints. <laughs> you don't hear footprints. You, you hear footsteps coming to the door, and it opens, and you dust of disappearance yourself. Okay. Uh, found in a small packet. This powder resembles very fine sand. There is enough of it for one use. When you use an action to throw the dust in the air, you and each creature and object within ten feet of you, so... Uh, just me, <laughs> and I'm under the couch. Um, so not the couch. Be- not the couch. Become invisible for 2D4 minutes, uh, which is four minutes. All right. The duration is the same for blah, 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 blah. It's all consumed, blah, blah, blah. If I attack, it ends, blah, blah. Okay, blah, blah it is. Um, a The door opens uh, from the west side, and a... Um, a stately looking man uh, comes in. He's got um, a, a red jacket with buttons, on, uh, gold or copper buttons on the front. He has a, a waistcoat under that and some um, really nice slacks and what seem to be very polished boots. And he um, he's a human and he stands about... Uh, Five nine, and he walks in and he says, "Ah yes, where's the doctor I didn't call for?" Right here, and somebody call for me for you. Hmm. I assure you, it wasn't me. What what business have you with me? Well, I'm a doctor. You're a patient. Would you like me to just do the exam, make sure that you're a tip top shape? He looks at you and he says. Yeah, I'm sorry. I believe you must be mistaken. I will call the constabulary if you do not leave. Okay, well, you could have just said that at the front door. I'm not the one that invited me in. My butler was quite mistaken. I oh. thought maybe you were someone else. Who? <laughs> oh. oh, are you expecting someone? Not this is any of your business, but I often entertain guests of my business in this room. Oh, I thought maybe uh, you were expecting a delivery of some sort. I noticed an empty spot in your painting wall. (laughs) Yes, I am uh, waiting on a painting to be done of me, a portrait. Uh, It's his family tradition to hang them in this room. Oh, interesting. Uh, I I read uh, in the obituaries that your father passed. My condolences. Thank you. What strange makeup you have. <laughs> yes, I'm a kitty cat. But please, my kitty cat makeup aside for a moment. Uh, 
I am a man of some means myself. I have a manor on the eastern portion of town. Uh, maybe I could use the same artist you did. Uh, which artist did you go with for your painting? I'm sorry, you said it hasn't been done yet? Dr. Crud pokes Tanager in the head. Blink, blink. Uh, <laughs> I'll get detect thoughts on. Um, so, remind me on detect thoughts. Is that, do you just read their mind straight up? Uh, I get all of their surface thoughts, but if I want to probe deeper, like, into their, like, deeper thoughts or memories. So, basically, I'm just going to prod him with, like, base level questions to get him to accidentally think about, like, oh, yeah, that guy's in the basement or whatever, you know? So when you ask him about um, the painting and you said who who did the painting, mm-hmm. he just goes, oh, fuck. <laughs> In his mind. And, and he says, I, well, I haven't chosen an artist yet. Oh, that's funny. My friend uh, Giuseppe Matachi actually is a pretty good painter. I was just hanging out with his lovely wife and son earlier today. Maybe I could ask f- uh, him for you. Hmm. What's he think about that? Uh, so when he when he thinks about that, he um, you you just get a name and this face with a scar on it, and it's just Tony. Doctor Crud pokes Tanager in the head again, harder. <laughs> oh no, that turns it off. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> And he says, and he says, mm, we have a family painter I'll be going with. Thank you. Oh, oh, I understand. That's, that's very interesting. Um, let's see. Uh, if I could ask one more thing of you. Uh, yes, because I have some pressing business I need to take care of. Yeah, it says you've recently acquired the title of Lord, and I'm sure there's a lot going on with that. Could you perhaps uh, let me use your restroom? Why, of course, the privy is that way. And he he motions to the east and says, now if that's all, I I must be going. I have important business I must attend to immediately. Well, you're going to want to see a doctor, because just as a courtesy glance to you, you look terrible. Yes, and maybe get a building inspector, because... This place is a tinderbox. Go up at any moment. <laughs> um, uh, but then I'm just going to start snooping through his house. Okay, and when when you you were still detecting thoughts um, when when yeah. you mentioned Giuseppe, uh, this when he said I have things to take care of, you got an image of half elf town. Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, telepathy Olive and basically be like maybe. Tail this guy. I don't know exactly what your end game is. Was hiding under the couch, but you know, uh, I think like we should keep an eye on this guy. Um, yeah. Does he? Does there any any room that seems like an office or anything? Um the the drawing room is pretty well his his office. Um, mm. yeah. That, I'm just gonna go rifle through his medicine cabinet and steal some small objects and then if I if, like if I don't see anything like suspicious I guess could I just do an investigate look for like blood stains on the carpet or fingernail scratches leading to like a dead end wall yeah um, go ahead and, and roll an investigation check for me cool so I believe that's going to be a dirty 20 okay um, so you don't find anything in incredibly incriminating i mean he has some various medicines and um and things in his medicine cabinet it's it's all very innocuous there's maybe a few extra like downers that are there um maybe he has a recreational habit you're not really sure Uh, but then they also could have been from from the father uh yeah no i absolutely take those for later okay just pop them in my pocket Um, and yeah, you don't see any fingernail scratches. There's no like secret door looking like areas to, I mean, it's all pretty standard, you know, rich guy's house. It's well appointed and it has a wicked ship theme, like probably over, over much, but, uh, super dope. I'm satisfied. So he's left. He went out the East door and, um, 
if you there are windows in the in this room it's one of the front rooms and you do see him walking out outside now uh yeah i don't want to get suspicious in case you have to come back here so i'll just leave you know so wait he left dr crud and olive alone in the study well he left dr crud in the study <laughs> olive is invisible under a couch Oh, Dr. Crud got left alone in there, and then he's heading out the door. Dr. Crud's going to toss the room. All right. Um, you uh. Go ahead and roll an investigation check for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a dirty 20. All right. So as you are looking through, uh, I imagine you're just, like, toppling over his desk and, like, pulling things out. Um, you... You see a uh, a piece of paper that was obviously drenched and then dried out again, and it's you know there's nothing special really about what's written on the paper, uh, but as you smell it, it gives you an uh, like a a soapy smell. Methinks we still have more to do at the laundromat. Dr. Crud will uh, make his way out. Poof, Olive. You revisible yourself. You are inv- you are now visible again under under a couch. Mm. Oh, one of the things Dr. Crud did while I was tossing it was throw one of the drapes over the couch so once she did poof back, she still wouldn't be seen. Okay. Well, if we're unattended in this room slash mansion, I guess I'll crawl out. <laughs> I didn't expect this. Uh, All right. Um, I join you, and I look at the soapy page that you're holding. Methinks there's still something we have to do at the soap place with the clothes and the cleaning. Oh, why? What's on this paper? And I look at it. Is there writing on it? There, There is writing on it. I can read. Um, you you can, but, uh, it's, it's fairly innocuous. It seems like it's just like a, a, a list of things. Uh, one of the things says get portrait done and like, a, it's like a to-do list and the get portrait done is ticked off. Hmm. Is there a box for kill the painter uh, or a kidnap painter? No, there's not a kidnap painter. There's, um, change will which is uh, ticked off, and there is um, get painting again on there that is now unticked. There's, so there's two. There's a, a ticked one and an unticked one. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I guess, I mean, since we're unattended in this mansion, <laughs> I mean, we meet up with Tanager, who's pocketing downers in the medicine cabinet. <laughs> room right yeah and we're all what you always do when when you go to anyone's house you just go into their medicine cabinet and take drugs (laughs) Uh, before before leaving this room dr crud is first going to cut x's in the portraits of the family and is there a window here yes to the street okay dr crud's going to open the open a window he's going to grab his drone put it into the air and say follow him and set his uh, auto dock to follow the uh, Dorian butthole. <laughs> All right, um, the the drone <laughs> flies away, and you cut X's in the paintings. Oh yeah. All right. Well, you've destroyed many works of art. Nah, art is debatable. Wait, did I get that right? So you're cutting up the paintings, and you're causing property destruction. I already have. I mean, I tossed the entire room. Tanager's going to burn the place down, so I mean... Uh, okay. All right. So I'm going to have a chat with you. I'm going to sit on the upturned, drape-covered couch, and (laughs) I'm going to cross my legs and fold my arms and just watch you as you destroy things, and I'm going to say, Kenny, which is your true name? Oh, the rumors have been flying in the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild about how that's your first name. I'm like, Kenny. Don't call me that. Okay, Dr. Crud III. Thank you. What are you doing? I'm looking to see if there's something hidden behind these paintings. But you could do that by lifting them off the wall. 
Well, I mean, there's the back and front. I mean, you gotta do the X so you can see if there's something inside. I thought you were this, like, ethical pacifist, this great doctor who would save lives and make the world a better place, and yet somehow you're here doing this. I ain't hurt nobody. You don't think that destroying these works of art is something bad? No. But what about the artist who spent hundreds of hours making these, the people who paid for it with gold they'd earned and, and because they valued these paintings, and the future children who could look up to these paintings and value their heritage and feel a sense of pride in the duty that they do? Well, the artist doesn't care because he got paid, and then these guys are kidnapping people and being just terrible people. I mean, you do realize the state of affairs that the, his employees have to live through. So, no, I don't feel bad for them. So everyone who gets accused of something is guilty first, before being proved innocent? No, but... Tanny has already confirmed that he was lying about the, uh, about the, uh, the Giuseppe, the painter. Okay, well, then this particular lord of Bartleby might be stripped of their title, but the house of Bartleby hasn't harmed you. Okay, Olive, what do you want me to say? I'm cutting up these paintings looking for clues. What What's going on here? I'm just, I'm worried about the path you're taking. Noted. And where are you headed? I'm headed to the bathroom where Tanager is probably getting high right now because he's been left alone way too long. <laughs> oh, my friends. Uh, my I'm friends. getting high outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an animal. I drink in the bathroom. I smoke outside. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to follow you and I'm going to, I'm going to crouch. Oh, that's right. I crouch down. And I watch as Jenny watches you destroying these paintings. All right. Your daughter is learning from you. Yeah. Bad things happen to bad people. All right. Um. So this isn't in story. This is like a side note. Olive is going to report Dr. Crud III to Child Protective Services. Okay. You guys don't know that. I'm just going to have a home visit scheduled. Uh, a wellness no check. No particular reason. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, like, I, just one last attempt. I'm going to look up at Dr. Crud III and I'm going to say, is this how you want to raise Jenny? I still don't see what your issue is. Okay. Olive lights a torch, throws it over her shoulder as she walks out of the room. Onto the drapery, what? which is very flammable. Uh, okay. Olive, what the heck are you doing? This is not the time for arson. I already did it. It's on fire. Uh, and she was worried about me. Holy crap. <laughs> it went from zero to a hundred real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what we're doing. <laughs> okay. So, you're outside. You're not going to die in the fire. <laughs> could I potentially make a perception check to see or smell smoke? Nope. You separated uh, yourself from the party. This is what you get. Not yet. The outside. I walked outside. <laughs> somebody threw a torch in my kitchen, and I'm in the backyard. <laughs> um. So yeah, as you throw the torch, the drapery does indeed catch on fire, and it it's quickly spreads to the ceiling, and the the teak begins to catch fire and and starts to burn. Uh. A, about uh, just a few minutes after uh, the the flames begin to um, really, you know, pour out of a window in the front and the back, and you're you tan as you're are able to see it. The the butler from before comes in, just oh dear, and he starts. Oh, we didn't stay there. We were on our way out. We oh. checked the medicine cabinet, saw that the drugs were gone, and then went outside. Oh, okay. So you're outside, and yeah. well, you can from outside see the butler like because remember i said there's a window to the street the butler is uh runs in oh dear and then runs out of the house screaming fire there's a fire in the bottom of the state now olive if anybody dies in there because we didn't clear the house first that's on you someone help us save the babies that we keep in there just kidding no i was just <laughs> uh, 
I have a follow up. <laughs> uh, so it looks like we did go with the arson plan, guys. Yeah, I mean, it was your plan. It was a threat, and I will not be held responsible for this. <laughs> no, that's I, totally on you, Olive. I mean, what happened to the whole uh, people worked hard for these things, and then you just destroyed everything? I think Olive's trying to scare you straight. You told me they didn't deserve it because they were guilty, remember? I'm following your ethics. No, there's a time and place for arson. Oh, okay. Sorry, I destroyed their property more than you had already destroyed it. <laughs> well, you just covered up my stuff. True. No one will know that you cut the paintings <laughs> in half because <laughs> they have now been burned to a crisp. Uh, okay. So, Tanninger is going to... It's getting uncomfortably it was your hot. Plan, it was in no way my plan to burn this guy's house down. <laughs> if anything, oh, at the beginning. I had a very simple plan to have a light interrogation, and I've been ready to go for like 15 minutes. <laughs> the chucklehead bunch is in there committing property damage and arson. So, that's not me. I did light robbery and taking someone else's medicine. That's my thing. I just want to set the scene here. So you three, a crocodile person, a, 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 an elephant person, and a goat person are standing a goat person with face paint like a kitty are arguing about arson in front of a house that is engulfed in flames. It's like you're sweating now. It's hot. Well, okay. I also, I do want to cast Unseen Servant to go into the fire room and try to make it as close to as an accident as we can. <laughs> Topple over like an oil lantern. <laughs> You know, like, <laughs> really, like, I'm, like, scolding you guys as I'm covering up the crime scene. I'm not okay guys, with this as I cover it up. The Guild Festival is in, like, two weeks, and you know our Yelp rating on Fantasy Yelp is not great. It's not. We can't. It's not. This can't come back on us. <laughs> now, look, I'm going to turn into the weird scar guy I saw in that guy's mind and go walk around Half-Elf Town, and hopefully someone will recognize me. If you would like to come, I will need backup because I'm very easy to beat up. <laughs> I will follow <laughs> stealthily. We also got my drone that's following uh, Dorian Butthole. Heck yes. Good job. Do you have a way of communicating with the drone? No, it's just visual. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, if we had someone to cast Find Familiar, we could have a little animal find the drone. Yeah, we need Nesgrex. Um, I don't have that, and there's nothing I can really do to aid that. So, yeah. Um, since Disguise Self only lasts for an hour, uh, are we down with the me look like Tony with the scar? Yeah, I'm doing and a then, stealth check so I could follow Unseen behind you. Unseen not by you, uh, but by everybody else. That is a... I'm pretty stealthy. 18. You're super stealthy. Oh. Uh, I might as well give you my trickster blessing, which gives you advantage on stealth for an hour. Oh, sweet. Let me roll that again. Oh, that's much higher. 24. Wow, you are uh -huh. practically invisible as you run from darkened corner to darkened corner behind Tanager, who looks like a uh, a thug with a big scar. As a monk, I can do it perpendicular to the wall. Oh, that's cool. Can you run, like, on top of buildings, like Assassin's Creed? You're just, like, jumping between. Yeah. yeah? Cool. Yeah. Very cool. And, and like, uh, I've got two, what are they called? Immovable rods. So when I stop moving, I just click the button and stay in place like a spider. Spider alligator. Spider alligator. Does whatever a spider alligator does. Um, <laughs> that's terrifying. Um, okay, so <laughs> you disguise yourself as this this person tony um sort of larger build um kind of a, a hum human um and i assume that you take the face paint off and you don't keep the kitty uh disguise self changes my form and my clothes well, and things you could so want to keep it on 
<laughs> no, I'm going to not. I, I guess for like, as I'm casting the spell for like a second, it'll be Tony with the face paint on and be like, hey guys, look at, look at how dumb this guy looks. <laughs> and then I'll, then I'll get it off. All right. So, so as Tony, you have a, a hood on, you have a, a, a long, uh, ragged black cloak and, um, you have a, a pretty nasty scar that goes from like above your left eye uh, down into your cheek, it, like miss your eye, but you know you you definitely have a, a pretty nasty facial scar there, and you are walking around uh, half elf town. Uh, if I guess I'll, I would like to head towards the laundromat, and if nobody like reacts to any way, like oh crud, it's a nice nice. <laughs> Sorry, crud. I didn't mean it like oh crap, it's uh <laughs> it's Tony. <laughs> like uh. <laughs> If nobody does that, I'll just head to the laundromat, go in, and then, I don't know, make up some kind of lie. Okay. So, you... you no one um, recognizes you or, or, you know, oh, crap, Tony. Give, you don't hear any of that as you walk through the streets and as you... But when you walk into the um, laundromat, uh, Mr. Tan is sitting at the, at the desk and he says, Ah, Tony thought you were already here did you go out did i miss you i needed smokes something bad happened at the boss's house you seen anything funny how's the package it's where we left it you know uh, how about you do something useful and get the door for me my hands are full and i'm just gonna try to intimidate him like i'm just being a bully he's kind of like you remember who you work for, right? Um, all right. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, you know what? I'll burn a spell slot for that. Okay. I'm going to detect thoughts up again. Okay, so he's like, why is this guy doing this to me? Like, why is he intimidating me? He works for us. <sighs> Sorry, I woke up on the wrong side of whatever dirty mattress I sleep on. Yeah, I understand, Tony. The sewers will do that to you. Uh, all right. So I guess, ooh, Tanager is totally just probing the waters on this one. Kind of like playing hot cold where I'm like, I'm walking towards the back and waiting for him to like, be like, no, it's not over there. <laughs> like, <laughs> just sort of like reaching for one door and then like, oh, no, no, not that, uh, down <laughs> here maybe. So he's, he, you sees you going for the office door and he's like, Tony, no, come on. Uh, <laughs> wait here for a sec. I'll get the girls out. And he he heads to the back, and you hear him um, kind of clap his hands, and every, everybody take 15. And you, um, out in the courtyard, or out in the, in the, you hear the door from the back kind of open and shut, and Mr. Tan then comes back in, opens the door for you, and brings you into the uh, into the main room of the laundromat. Head on down, and he he points over to the where the ringers are, and there's a drain there. Awesome, huh? I'd like to note that Olive and Doctor Crud the Third are outside the laundromat. I'm not sure if Doctor Crud the Third was just like falling behind, falling behind, like where you could see Olive, but not. Tony? Dr. Crud, I think, was following his drone. The drone is hovering over this place. Oh, dang. So we meet up out. So Olive's standing outside, and then Dr. Crud the third walks up, and I'm like, oh, dang. Hi, Olive. What's going on? Buttholes are here. So is Tanager posing as Tony? Uh oh, uh, we got to get ourselves in there. Dr. Crud will retrieve his drone and then walk in. All right. Mr. Tan is um, not there at the moment. He is, uh, and there's a sign that says, like, back in 15. Oh, are there girls in the lobby? Like, laundresses? No, there are no uh, girls in the lobby. Where did they go? They went out the, Tanager heard them go out the back door, but you don't know that. Oh, got it, got it. Okay. Oh, there's a back door. I'm sure if anybody's been evacuated, it's been through the back door. I've already had a tour of this place. We gotta go right through here. And he opens up the door to the back. So you come upon Tanager and Mr. Tan, 
and uh, Mr. Tan looks at you and he's like, uh, excuse me, I, I don't think I invited you back. Uh, please, we're, we're on a staff meeting. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, you didn't hear? I have been hired as uh, me, Mr. Scarface's uh, personal physician. He needs me. I've got lumbago. The lumbago. <laughs> Olive does not know what that is. <laughs> I don't even know. I what don't it know is. what it is either. Um, it's an old Western ailment. I think it's like a slip disc in your back or something. All right. I don't know. Mister Tan is like looks at looks at you, uh, Tony Tanager, and says, "You know, at the uh, the half elf." Apoc- apothecary across the street. We have stuff for that. There's a cream. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll hit that up once I'm done in the sewers. And I, like, nod my head towards the sewer grate to my friends. And at that point, uh, so Mr. Tan is like, what the hell? And he, like, looks at you, like, <laughs> and then he's like, now, let me just escort these two out. And he, he starts, and he's like, hello, Dragon lady. Dr. Crud knocks him out. I was going to say, we got to beat this guy up at some point. I didn't know if I should be the one to start it. But. You know, Dr. Crud <laughs> brings his truck down on the top of his head, right in that specific place that knocks him out in one blow. Uh, okay. Um, so you, you crack this dude's <laughs> skull, basically. And uh, he, he... Non-lethally. Non-lethally. You non-lethally crack this guy's skull, and he falls to the floor like a ton of bricks. And... Uh, it doesn't scream though, so you guys are in the room, and their washer people, the washer women, are not in their laundresses. But what is in here is plenty of fabric to tie him up with. Doctor Crud ties him up and throws him in his into his office and gags him. Okay. The way that yeah. rope works in Dungeons and Dragons is that it has a DC seventeen difficulty to escape. So. Oh, he'll never get that. I I got him with one hit. He's, he's, no, oh. he doesn't even got a level. And unconsciousness. Uh, <laughs> if a person is not in danger of dying, then they roll a D4 and they wake up after that many hours. All right. So let's see. He's going to be out. All right. He's out. Uh, also, in real yeah. life, if you're ever unconscious for more than two minutes, go to the hospital. You've got a concussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tanninger looks at him and goes, I think they have a cream for that at the apothecary. Uh. Spits on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tanny, did you need me to look at you for that, uh, that condition you say you have? I mean, I got, I got, I got plenty of things. That apothecary, he, it sucks. My shit stuff's better. Oh, crud. Don't worry. I was acting. And I throw my hands up and turn back into Tanninger. <laughs> Oh, so the sewer? Uh, yes, yes. So there's something's going on in the sewers. How old is Jenny? Can she walk yet? Where is she? She's in my. She's in my pocket. Okay, so there's like a baby in a papoose on you, as you smack people unconscious. Isn't she five feet tall? She's in. There's a, a beans pocket and a Jenny's pocket. Uh huh. And she's five feet tall. You're getting a CPS visit as an epilogue. <laughs> <laughs> The Nicomoy Child Protective Services Agency has been alerted. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Tanger's going to go on the sewers. <laughs> yeah, all of all those. <laughs> okay, so the the sewer grate, um, go ahead and make an investigation check for me. Not bad at those. Uh, that is a middling 18. All right, so you, you uh, are able to... Um, determine that there is a uh, there is some uh, handles in the floor and you can pull it up and the, and the whole grate and the block that it's in like sort of pops up and you're you look down into the grate and you see a ladder uh, heading down uh, can you tell how far the drop is uh, yeah you can see the floor it's only uh, about uh, 10 feet ah, I drop down mirthful leap all right <laughs> You are on the floor of a of a sewer. There's it's a stone floor, stone wall area. There's a a channel that's kind of cut 
underneath where um, the water would flow down and goes into a, a main channel that runs down the center of a long corridor. It is dark. Uh, I holler for my friends to come down and go, oh, uh, also, those washerwomen will be back from their break in like 14 minutes, so we might want to high step it. Are you replacing... Who step it? The grate? Hot step it. Move quick. Yeah. You replace the grate? Okay. I mean, once everyone's in, of course. Yeah, Olive's in. I imagine that you weren't <laughs> shutting it on Olive. <laughs> <laughs> Olive, who is probably like super at home in the sewer, right? Don't they yeah. have alligators in the sewer? <laughs> maybe all right so <laughs> you you holler up and um yeah all right so you're out, you're in the sewer the the water is flowing um from west to east and the same direction that the tunnel is running uh yeah if it seems like that's the the way to go uh, i'm gonna head that way and if it like goes two directions, and uh, I'd like to just investigate for like footprints or signs of wear, like I imagine people are walking down here. Yeah, so there's um, there's definitely some wet footprints along the the side of the trench. Um, so basically, what you have is like two raised places on either side of a channel in the middle, which flows, which is where the water flows, and so you can. Um, Walking on the on the north side, you do see a few footprints that have are wet and have been uh, recently laid down. Tanger points them out to his compadres and follows them. Is this a storm drain or a sewage sewer? Uh it's a. It's not a sewage sewer, so it's not as stinky. It's dank, but it's not like waste righteous olive hops in the water because wet footprints implies they were in the water and i'd like to i can hold my breath for 15 minutes i'd like to do what we're doing but the underwater version okay i mean it it is sort of wet along where you guys crawl down because that is where the the water flows down from when they wring out the clothes that's where they dump it so not necessarily somebody swimming but all right, you are in the water, and it is uh, soapy. Her, it stings your eyes just a little. Ah. But you have that nictitating membrane, so you're fine. Never mind. <laughs> um, I am going to report these people to the uh, wastewater expulsion investigators for expelling <laughs> not clean water, not treating their water. <laughs> Olive's going to go to a lot of recording places after this. <laughs> yeah. Olive, you're kind of being like a narc today. <laughs> you guys don't know that. I'm just planning it. <laughs> like, seriously, Olive, when did you become a cop? No, I'm just... I, it, it really irritates me. Literally. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, you guys heading down the hall? Yes. All right. You, you head down the hallway, and you come to um, an area that has... Uh, it's like an L junction, um, or I guess it's a T junction. There's some water coming from the north, and it comes down and meets up with the longer corridor that you guys are walking down. And you see in the shadow is a um, is another human, and he's um, standing there with a spear, and he yells at you. To, says. All right, where are you going there? Get, get, get back. Stop. No, Tanger's not doing this. Can Olive leap out of the water, grab him with my teeth, and drag him under the water and do a barrel roll? Yes. You know what? M make, an, <laughs> make an attack roll for that. I'm going to let you go with surprise, even though like you maybe shouldn't, but like let's do it because that that's surprising. <laughs> Yay. Okay, I have a 19 to hit. Unarmed strike. Oh wow! Yeah, you hit, and so are we gonna? Are we doing a grapple to pull him under the water? I guess I could use my monk abilities, right? Yeah. Um, so it says that if I hit a person, I can do it. Flurry of blows effect is they must succeed on a deck saving throw or be knocked prone. Could knocked prone be dragged into sewer? I'll give you dragged into sewer. <laughs> so and make a deck saving throw, and my 
Key save DC is uh, 15, I think. All right. So they do not make the saving throw, and he is... So you leap out of the water, a wet crocodile in a Jedi robe, <laughs> and just this guy is completely taken aback and screeches <laughs> as you grab on, like, clamp onto his legs with your with your giant 88 tooth mouth and you just like thrash him back into the water and start rolling over and over <laughs> and this guy the <laughs> like that well Olive just did a murder no it's non-lethal damage because in D&D officially by the rules all physical combat can be you can choose not to kill people which how do you non-lethally drown a person uh, yeah that's like He's panicking. He's breathing hard. No, you drown him. I I would just stop before he's dead. I'm gonna stop before he's dead. <laughs> okay. Um, and then wrap him in the head a few times, non lethally. All right. So he's doing that, and and as as you hear that, um, so let's let's go ahead and, and roll initiative, uh, because because we are <laughs> sort of fighting, I guess here, um. <laughs> Aren't you guys glad you had a crocodile? <laughs> I've never regretted it once. I love how you were like, don't cut the art up while I eat this guy. And she's worried about Dr. Crud? <laughs> Look at what she just did. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> All right. Uh, we are getting so caught up in semantics. We're adventurers. Yeah. We do a lot of wild things sometimes. Sometimes they don't always make sense to an outsider. But we trust our friends. We trust the process. We have to get this guy home to his dumb wife and kid or whatever. <laughs> and at the end of the day, by gosh, we're going to do it. And then if we have a nobleman who hates us afterwards, well, that's why we have friends. Ends justify the means. Ends justify the means. Yes, yes. they do. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to knock anyone for their choice of murder or not murder. Oh, oh, oh crap. Battle starting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> initiative. <sighs> All right. So, uh, 16. 16. 17. Okay. <laughs> Brag. 15. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 15, 16, 17. So that is Olive. You're going to go first. Yeah, uh, I guess I'm going to Flurry of Blows and Monk Attack. That means I get four hits. I'll roll these really quickly. And just let me know if this person drops unconscious, because I will then stop punching them and lay their body next to the sewer on the dry land. Okay. Okay, so that's a 23 to hit. That hits. A natural one, another 23 to hit, and a 12. The 12 does not hit. The 220, uh, two over 20s do. Okay. 11 damage for the first hit and 14 damage for the second hit. Gotcha. Okay. So he, he after the first hit, he is unconscious and you are just oh, like then, slapping yeah. a wet body at this point. I, just put his, I lay him down. He's fine. All right. So you on the, uh, gently. Olive, put his hand in the water so he pees himself. <laughs> Actually, sure. I oh, he already did that when he sheeted the barrel roll. <laughs> you're going to have to spend the next action moving his body um because you're this action was was slapping him silly so next action you will you'll move his body okay if okay. you want if you want i keep his head above the water because he's out you cradle him lovingly nah <laughs> hatefully hatefully <laughs> no i just hold him by the head <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. So three additional guards roll in uh, from from the west, and you hear them clanking, and they have their their spears, and they see you in the they they look at the scene here, and they've got. <laughs> I, I I can't get over the fact that we have a giant elephant like crouched down in the sewer. Uh, we have he, you're like barely able to stand in there. Uh, Dr. Crud, we've got uh, face paint McGee and a crocodile <laughs> holding up the, their friend by the head. And they see this and they're so two of them are going to make uh, ranged weapon attacks. They're going to throw their spears at you, Olive. Oh, does a my seven... DC is 20 now. Oh, well, so that does not hit one of them. One of the sh um, 
one of them, or both of them actually, they throw the spears at you and they land in the water with a clink and are unable to connect. They, as they, and then they start pulling other spears from, or their short swords from their, from their belt. The third one, uh, runs at, um, at you, Dr. Crud, and he makes uh, a two handed spear attack at you. He can try. Oh, look, I didn't do nothing. It was all her. He rolled a natural 20. So does a 23 hit? Well, actually, natural 20 should already hit. He's going to do 11 damage to you. As he jabs forth his spear, he kind of goes, ah! Makes a yell, yell. Well, I don't like you now. Oh, gosh. Jenny's watching her dad get injured. Her mom? Her parent get it? Her par- single parent? I don't know. You laid an egg. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm her mommy. Oh, no, she's asleep in the pocket. She's sleeping through this? Oh, she can sleep through anything. I suppose we live in a fantasy world. All right. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a goat man. With kitty (laughs) A kitty face paint on. (laughs) All right. All right, so that's their turn. That brings us to Tanager. Uh, yeah, Tanager's is gonna bust out just a nice Tasha's hideous laughter. All right. Then the D- DC is fourteen, and I'll pull up the exact wording. Is that a wisdom save or? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Uh, yes, wisdom save, and his their intelligence score is above four, right? Yes, they're people. Okay, cool. Uh, then we're good. So, yeah, they fall into a fit of laughter. Uh, they fall prone if they fail to save and become incapacitated. Okay, and what did you say the save was again? 14. 14. Okay, so we have one who made it. The one who is attacking uh, Dr. Crud does not. He starts laughing. Oh, it is single target. Oh, I thought it was a multi-target. Okay, so who were you targeting? No. The guy fighting Dr. Crud or... Uh, honestly, Olive has two people coming at her, so I probably would have tried to take one of them out. Okay, so I will use the first roll that I did. Uh, I thought it was uh, area. My bad. Uh, so that was a 15, so it did not did not make him laugh. Um, he does not find Tasha funny. Tanager is very funny, and that's unacceptable. Uh, I think I have an ability. Uh, nope, never mind. All right. Uh, so talk, Dr. Crud. Yes, yeah, shouldn't have done that. Dr. Crud's going to take out one of his signature portion, potions and... Uh, Shove it down the guy's throat. Okay. What are the effects of your potion? Uh, This one is going to blind him. All right. Do we have a con save or anything? Yes. What's the DC? I'll let you know after you roll. That doesn't seem right. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like that, that may be the wrong way. Do you have a DC? Yes, I do. What is the DC? <laughs> it's written down. So you could just say whatever over it you want to. Okay. He rolled an 18. That's over it. It's a 15. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's really weird. All right. Doctor. So he drinks this potion and is like, <laughs> and is like spitting it out on you. And some of it gets on Jenny. No, she's inside the code. I think she's fine. Okay. Oh, she, oh it's an inside pocket. Yeah, it's an inside pocket. Oh, okay. Well, that makes this way less terrible then, because she can't see anything that's happening. No, she can't. All right. Doesn't that make you feel better, Olive? Sure. Sure. Olive's not sure. All right. Um, uh, Olive, I guess that's back to you. I'm not done yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have a bonus action? My auto dot comes in. The auto doc's going to use a uh, quick patch on Dr. Crud. And heal the 11 damages he just got. All right. The drone comes in and auto docks you up. Yes. Now I'm done. All All right. right. Olive. I spend my action to place the unconscious person safely on the bank of the sewer. And I spend my movement to advance threateningly towards the still standing people, hoping that they attack me instead of my friends. Okay, that is a good hope, um, because as they see you, like, so you rush out of the water, you gently place their friend down, rush out of the water, (laughs) 
like a like a monk would you know like you like um put one foot on one side of the the landing and then you like jump across and maybe you do a flip or something it's impressive yeah and they are yeah. so now they, <laughs> they they are like drawing their short swords and they're just like looking at each other like we don't get paid enough for this and <laughs> what so one of them um, makes an attack at you. Uh, let's see here. Down to my guard. AC of 20. AC of 20. So he makes his... Oh, he hits. He actually hits you with a 21. And so he's going to go ahead and make his... So he hits you, but your monk prowess, you are just like Neo in the Matrix as he swings at you. And he's able to nick you, but only for... Two damage. Down to 83 hit points. Oh, is that all? And the second one is going to... Uh, he's going to do the same, and he's going to make an attack at you, and he is absolutely going to whiff big time. He is not very good with the short sword. He just is sort of like, ah, I don't know what to do with this thing, and just sort of like does what you would see like in a movie, but it's not It's not good. And the most terrifying part of Olive is that she has scales, so this is AC due to natural armor, so stuff can hit me and then just not do damage. Woo! That's creepy. <laughs> I love Olive. Olive gets weirder and weirder as, you know, as this year is going on. <laughs> Wait, I've had natural armor the whole time. I know, scales. but like, as I learn more about you. Yeah. Licking blood, burning down noble houses. It's been, perhaps you guys aren't the best influence on Olive. It's been a long road. <laughs> I think that may be true. All right, so um, Tanager, you're back up. All right, I am going to inflict wounds. Uh, Olive, do you remember how much it took to knock somebody down? It was like about twenty, thirty. In to knock people down. The, the guard you already beat up like two rounds ago. Oh. Uh. It wasn't that much. And okay. I lightly tapped them with my blows. I answer in character. <laughs> I didn't I am... really hurt them all that much. It was probably the shock from being barrel rolled. Okay, I'm just going to do a regular inflict wounds at its normal level. Okay. Uh, it's a melee spell attack. Holy crap, that was a good roll. Um, my bonus is three. Does a 15 hit? A 15 does not hit. His shield protects him. Crushing. All right. That was it. All right. Uh, Dr. Crud. Dr. Crud looks at him. All right, it's going to be that way, huh? Pulls out his bow and saw and gets him with it. I thought you were a pacifist. It... No, he's not a pacifist. Not anymore. But you have Jenny back. That does not mean he went back to being a pacifist. Why not? Because it doesn't work that way. Guys, I feel like this might be a later conversation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the guards are like, what is going on with these chatty people? So we're kind of having a day. There's some internal group turmoil before us. Also, this definitely ends with all of your murders. So, like, maybe just don't fight us today. We're not going to 24 to hit. <laughs> Ooh, that hits. That is going to be 11 slashing damage. All right. So, um... Do you want to describe how you do this, or should I? Because y you killed him. No, I didn't. It's non-lethal. Oh, you're, going no you're doing non-lethal bone saw damage. Okay, just making sure. Yes, it's non-lethal. So actually what he does is he goes in with the bone saw. He hits him. All of a sudden, the guy's starting to bleed out. Juggler veins is lit, is slit, and it bloop, bloop, bloop. Dr. Cry's like, oh, crap, I didn't mean to do that. Puts a compress on and saves his life. He's not extremely excited about this, like not happy. He's not <laughs> thanking you. He's he's like <laughs> lost a lot of blood. He's pale and sick on the floor now, holding this like gauze that you've given him onto his neck. Just go to sleep. You'll be fine in the morning. Uh, uh, uh. All you need is a long rest. For the listeners, everything he said is valid Dungeons and Dragons mechanics. <laughs> yes. Uh, you can be at one hit point, have a long rest, and you're fine. 
It's true. It's <laughs> realistic. Um, uh. All right. So uh, all of, I guess that brings us back to you. We've got uh, Dr. Crud has just. Oh, oh. hold on. We're, my, no, oh, auto uh, my auto drone. Sorry. My auto doc. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, go ahead and help her. I know she doesn't like us anymore, but go ahead and help her. And he's the auto doc's gonna fly in and do a uh, quick patch to Olive oh, I'm for good, oh. 24 hit points. What? Oh, I'm not injured. Okay, all right, I'm down two. Oh, I two. thought you were. I thought you got hit. I- I'm down two. It's okay. Well, not anymore. All right. I used it. <laughs> Overkill. All right, Olive, you're our <laughs> like a whole. Dr. Robot comes over and like puts a band aid on the little scratch that you have and is like, beep, beep, you're good. Thanks. Uh, it's, it's more of a, a flying drone, you know, like a, a, a flying saucer with two arms that come out. Yeah, no, that, that was what I was picturing. Oh. <laughs> what, what was your description? It just sounded like a uh, bipedaled robot man. Oh, he flew over like, <laughs> and it was like, puts the band aid on, beep, beep. And like flies away. Thank you, UFO uh, with hands. <laughs> beep beep. <laughs> I make this sound now. <laughs> All right, and uh, so we have still two uh, two guards who are uh, they have just watched two of their friends get totally uh, wrecked by you guys through non lethally though, and one of them decides. He is going to throw down his weapon and just put his hands in the air. He's like, it sounds like you guys have been going through some stuff. And the other one is like, Jeffrey. And no, listen to Jeffrey. (laughs) Jeffrey's got the right idea. Jeffrey's the only smart one in this whole sewer. Aside from us three, of course. We're smart. Yeah. (laughs) Who wants to make a persuasion role? Because I I think that this could possibly happen. It sounds like it's Tanager. Tanager. Tanny baby. Yeah, come on, Tanny baby. Can't get less than a 23. That's a 23. All right. So, uh, yeah, you you definitely... Uh, he throws his sword down, and he's like, fine. And, and Jeffrey is like, this was the right call. We don't get paid enough for this shit. Oh, do you guys, like, need money? Because we have, like, a bunch of money. And we need some information. Also, these are my swords now, and I just take their swords. Who are you working for down here? Uh, I don't know. Keep in mind, the other option is we beat you up. I have prepared some hits. <laughs> so Jeffrey is like, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, look, I'll tell you what's going on. We just got hired from the guard guild, you know, it's like we've been doing temp work. Uh, because, you know, hard times in Nicomoy for guards these days. We've been doing some temp work down here. Um, Mr. Tan hired us. Not sure what he wants us to do, but there's like some dudes come in every once in a while. Uh, yeah, it, it's just, it's a weird gig, but they're, they're definitely part of like the gig economy. It's like, there's like Gruber, which is like a guard Uber. <laughs> they come by and like, you know, just guard your house or whatever. How long have you been working down here? Uh, about three weeks now. Three weeks, interesting. Uh, you ever seen, like, a noble-looking fellow? Oh, yeah, he comes in all the time. Anybody else got any questions, or have these guys scram? Where is where you, the thing that you're guarding? We're kind of guarding just this whole area. You know, there's some other rooms down there. Um, if you keep going... Is that where the... Is that where the noble guy goes? Down those ro- to the rooms? Yeah, there's a noble guy. There's a couple other people, too. We got a... There's a... Uh, it's like this moving statue thing. I'm not really sure what it is. And then there's this creepy guy who comes in with a scar all the time. He's always in. They brought a guy in the other day. He had, like, a robe and, like, a beret on. Not really sure. He was not looking too healthy when they brought him down. Did he sound like a video ca- game character? Yeah, some sort like of like a plumber, like a like a plumber. N- no, I don't know what you're talking about. Cause no. All right, okay. All right, we're gonna tie you up now. I thought you were letting us go. Come on, I thought we were all friends. We here. said we weren't gonna beat you up. 
<sighs> we can't have you warning nobody. We're going to tie you up and you're not going to get any ouchies or ouchies. Yeah, and then one of your passed out friends, whenever they wake up, can like untie you or whatever. It'll be in one D4 hours. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> what's a D4? <laughs> one of them is like, what? Uh, I can roll it. So which do you want? <laughs> well, it's three hours from now. Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey is like, okay, that that sounds fine. But then the other guy is like, uh, why don't you punch me just so it doesn't look like I, you know, did this. The, the boss can be kind of a, a nudge. Olive has this prepared. A 17 to hit for 7 damage, a 25 to hit for 9 damage, a 22 to hit for 7 damage, and a 24 to hit for 10 damage. All on that one guy? I mean, he asked for me to do this, Yeah, no, I was just... But did you do, like, the other guy, too? Nah, he doesn't want that. All right, so, yeah, you knock him unconscious, like, immediately. Uh, Oh, okay, then I stop. He's like, could you just give me a black eye? And then you're just like... (laughs) (laughs) Like eight. <laughs> and he like <laughs> falls to the ground, like bruised all over. His face is starting to swell up, and Jeffrey is just like, "You can just tie me up. It's okay. I'll get a new temp job." <laughs> what do you get paid like per day? Like eight silver. Oh yeah. Okay. I, I like as we're tying him up, hand him a piece of paper with my address on it. Be like, I, I could, I could pay you more than that. Oh, sweet. And after you're done with this paper, eat it. Yeah, and you have to eat the paper. Uh, In fact, eat this paper, too. And I rip out another piece of paper and just try to make him eat it. <laughs> As a goat, he's convinced that this is a healthy snack. It is a healthy snack. <laughs> he's like, I guess it's got fiber, and he, he eats it. I like you a lot, Jeffrey. We're going to have a beautiful future together. Thanks, goat kitty man. Why would you hire this guard? I don't know. I just get a really good vibe from him. <laughs> He's- and, and Jeffrey, I'm sorry about her. She's working through some issues. Huh? That was it's a like- good choice, though, but not getting the black eye. Yeah, you know, what? after this week, I've been thinking about changing careers. I don't know. Uh, God is just kind of a bitch of a job, I'll tell you. Yeah, you get beat up. <laughs> you can't. I take my paper back. Uh, I actually just needed a guard, so... <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, maybe I'll work for you. I don't know, but I already ate the paper, so you can't have it back. <laughs> Dr. Girl brings out a scalpel. If he wants it back, we can get it back. Oh, uh, let's not do that. You know, that's not necessary. I told you guys th- th- about Tony and, and stuff, so, you know, maybe I'll just keep my organs on the inside. All right, uh, Jeffrey, just have a sit. Of course, they were going to always remain on the inside. I was just going to get the paper. Little kooky surgery never hurt nobody. I don't know. I it listened to a few episodes removed. previously, and it sounds like yeah. kooky surgery is pretty creepy. <laughs> uh, no, that was an autopsy. You have never seen the other part of the the, the skill. Uh, t- does it involve harvesting organs? No, that's completely different. <laughs> that's organ harvest. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah, if you need me, I'll be here uh, pretending to be passed out. And he... Bye, Jeffrey. <laughs> Bye, goat man <laughs> with the kitty face. You were pretty cool. I like you. I hate your paper. I like you, too. It takes a smart enemy to just be like, no, I don't want to fight level 12 adventurers. I mean, who wants to die at work, man? Oh, that's I don't, too real. I don't know, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that one hit home for all of. Again, Tanager is like totally forgetting the context of what's happening and like hands him a cigarette and is like, yeah, it's nuts out there. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke in the sewers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, all right, did, then we tie them all up. Yep. Did we want to break here? Um, sure. Uh, uh, what's great is if you say that we're like walking down the sewers and we see, and then <gasps> cliffhanger, fire breathing kittens. Okay. You continue on down the dank sewer into, and you pass through where the previous guards that are now all tied up and or unconscious have been, uh, like kind of camped out and you turn a corner to the, uh, to the South and you see, a pool of water and in that pool is um, 
additional soapy water. Dun, dun, dun. And it looks like this is where the three guards had been camping. There are two exits from this room, one to the south and the other to the, to the west. It is dark and creepy. And soapy. And smells of soap. This has been the Fire Breathing Kittens. <laughs> Stay tuned for part two of this adventure. Today we've been playing with Olive. Bye. Dr. Crud the Third. That soapy water's a killer. <laughs> and Goat Man with a Painted Face, Tanager. Tanager! And if anyone would like to leave us a review on iTunes, we would love to read them on air. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> oh, my God. We hope that you're enjoying this episode of the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. Please leave us a review on iTunes.com. If you leave us a review, we'll read it on air. It's fun listening to the words of your review get read by the characters you know and love. So go to iTunes.com and leave us a review today. Can you think of someone who might enjoy this podcast? Please share it with them. Is their birthday coming up? A special anniversary? Would you like us to wish them a happy day on your behalf? You can arrange for us to read your shout out on air at firebreathingkittenspodcast.com through our partnership with the website Buy Me a Coffee. Do you enjoy reading books? You can find paperbacks and ebooks based on our adventures on Amazon.com in the bookstore, Fire Breathing Kittens, that part's all one word, podcast. The authors do a great job of adapting the stories into fun novels. We also have official merchandise on redbubble.com. Imagine owning a notepad with the Fire Breathing Kitten logo on the front, or a t-shirt with one of your favorite characters. And lastly, I'd like to take a moment to sincerely thank all of you. We don't pay to advertise this show, so the only way we can grow is through the support of listeners like you. Thank you. Welcome back to the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. Today, we are joined again by Olive. Hey. Dr. Crud the Third. Howdy. Whose real first name is Kenny. And Tanninger. Yo, what up? It's your boy Tanny in the building, ready to mess up these sewers, FBK style. And I'll be your DM today. Uh, so I've rolled a 15. Who is closest to 15 who's going to give us a recap of what happened last time on the sewer slog? I got a six. I got a two. I got a four. Olive, you're up. Arg. <laughs> okay. Last time on Fire Breathing Kittens. I took notes. There we go. That'll make things easier. <clears throat> Stefania, a woman in her 40s visited us with Vincenzo, a boy who was 12, and they were crying, and Tanager was like, how do we get these crying people out of the bar? And Dr. Crud was like, we hug them and give them empathy. An elusive, fleeting emotion that he showed for no one else in the adventure. <laughs> they told us how Giuseppe Matachi has been taken. He's a painter, and he painted a portrait for a noble, Dorian Bartleby. A few days passed, and... Everything seemed cool, but then Dorian Bartleby and friends came for Giuseppe and took him. Vincenzo followed and saw that they took him to a half-elf laundromat called Mr. Tan's Sparkle Clean. Because, apparently, the painting that Giuseppe painted has been changing changing face. I wrote down being change face. <laughs> so, which I think were the exact words. <laughs> All right, that's helpful. That's helpful. Okay. Um, they live at 73 Dr. Crud asks too many questions way. So when we find Giuseppe, we'll take him back to them there. I went to the Nick and Way Public Library, which is a wonderful large marble building with a great selection of books. And I found out that the Bartleby family, uh, recently the heir came to be the new head. His father died and that's why. And that they are lords who own a shipwright business, building ships. All right, then we met back up at the guild hall and 
Tanager told me about this great cotton candy. Um, <laughs> Tanager told me about this great. <laughs> 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 no particular reason, podcast listeners. Tanager told me about this great cotton candy factory. And, um, uh, yes. And Dr. Crud told me about Mr. Tan's Sparkle Clean and that he'd scoped it out and there was no obviously kidnapped person. We went to the Snooty Painter, or as Tanager calls it, Maxwell's, which is a cafe a mile from the guild hall in a converted Tudor style home where Maxwell, a five foot ten tall, thin built human with salt and pepper hair, who tastes like human slash chicken and owns the cafe, told us that he confirmed Giuseppe exists. He confirmed that paintings capture the essence of the subject. He confirmed the address of Giuseppe and he confirmed Giuseppe was missing for a few days. And he also gave us some new information, which was that Giuseppe plays dice for money and he's not very good at it he loses a lot so it's possible that giuseppe is potentially in debt with this information we continued investigating we went to the bartleby estate formerly <laughs> bartleby estate which was on capitol hill burn that shit down it was a stately building with big green spaces around it a three-story stone house which probably means it didn't all burn down and a blue shingled roof a large yard with nautical-themed topiaries and a low stone wall with a gate. We had some discussions on ethics, and Dr. Crud thoroughly swayed Olive that there was no reason not to use all of our power to investigate this kidnapping, even if it meant destruction of property or the burning down of a noble family home. So we did. And... Olive then... did. That was 100% on Olive. <laughs> All of us together decided to mm -mm. <laughs> disrespect this family. No, yeah, it was just me. Um, and <laughs> then... <laughs> Danager is laughing right now, so it's fine. And then so... <laughs> There's some judgment. Okay. Tanager found out that the person Bartleby was thinking of, Dorian Bartleby was thinking of, was Tony. And he had a face with a scar. And he works for Mr. Tan. And so... Donning the face of our lead, Tanager walked just straight to the laundromat and got his way inside and used his amazing bard charisma to talk Mr. Tan into showing us the entrance for their secret place, which led to the sewers. Um, and I guess the only other information I can give you is that Dorian Bartleby had a soapy to-do list that said, get portrait done, change will, etc., and that the guard Jeffrey is cool and Tanager might hire him alongside Curry to work as uh, the most scaredy cat of all guards because this is the best best people to hire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... You gave up right away. I'll hire you. It, it's really his rate. You can't beat eight silver pieces. Like, I'm just going to give him a gold. <laughs> <laughs> and the catchphrase of Jeffrey is, quote, we don't get paid enough for this. So earning a gold a day instead of eight silver, I mean, heck. Maybe they do get paid enough. <laughs> <laughs> that implies that there is some level of pay that he would accept to, like, you know, d fight to the death in the sewer, I suppose, so. They all survived. It wasn't to the death. There is some level of pay that I would accept to fight to a death in the sewer. It's a lot, but it exists. I mean, technically, it's 200 gold pieces. <laughs> oh, you forgot to mention the uh, the guy asked for a black eye and you completely pummeled him. I did it. And then some. Yeah. Did an excellent, very thorough job at making it look like he had been knocked unconscious by knocking him unconscious. <laughs> Request granted. Remarkable. <laughs> you should work for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. <laughs> The, the Nicomoy chapter of Make-A-Wish. Yeah, definitely put me around dying children. <laughs> okay. Mommy, why is this scary? Tanager <laughs> is going to look for the missing painter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys uh, rounded the corner into um, a relatively square room that has a circle of water in the center of it. Um, and the there's a line of water coming from into the circle from um, the 
west and the south and it seems to be like draining out in there so it's sort of swirling in there and, and going down into a, a lower level there is also two exits to this room uh each near that line of water so one is to the west and one is to the south um do the footprints that we saw when we initially entered the sewer like continue along any particular path or um the they sort of got mixed in with all those guard footprints mm -hmm. and now it's just sort of wet all around uh there's no real discernible footprints anymore all right well go west well we could try sniffing for italian food maybe that'll take us to uh giuseppe <laughs> all of you are a resident sniffer oh i'm not and though. taster look at his nose oh that's right Dr. Crudges looks at Tanny Boy incredulously. 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 <laughs> All of those. That faux pas was totally worth getting to incredulously. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, alright, I guess make an investigation check to see if you smell Italian food in the sewer? Or, like, paint or blood or anything that isn't normal sewer smell. All right, go for it. 22 for uh, for pizza. All right, uh, <laughs> you, you don't smell any pizza, but you do smell some uh, blood. And that coppery scent fills your trunk. And you hear um, some, like, like skin-slapping sounds and uh, moaning. Well, guys, I smell blood, and I'm hearing somebody doing something that they shouldn't be doing down here, so that's probably which way we want to go. And that's to the west. Cool. To the west. That's where the moaning and skin slapping is coming from. Uh... Like I said, they probably shouldn't be doing that down here. Uh... uh... Tanager has no strong opinions about walking into somebody somebody's room or whatever, so he'll just go ahead and walk in like he owns the place. I follow. There shouldn't be blood smell if that's happening. I mean, all right, so well, everyone has their proclivities, Olive. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh... Getting weird. Uh, you guys uh, go down a dark hallway, and as you come into a uh, another square chamber, uh, maybe uh, 40 feet uh, square. It's lit with a few torches on the south end, and you see the back of a man as he spins around in his black hood, and uh, he has a scar on his face, and he's standing in front of a man tied to a chair who is sort of slumped over and looks semi-conscious. Canager, how do you get over there? Huh. Acting. Tony, I presume. And I'm going to ready a hold person if he makes any wild moves. He looks at you guys and he's like, Hey, uh, you work for the boss? Yeah, I'm your doctor. Doctor? Well, when you rough somebody up, you need a doctor to keep them alive so you can keep roughing them up, right? M make a persuasion check. I want to see if Tony believes you. I mean, this is basically how we live. <laughs> <laughs> Persuasion. Oh, I'm good at that. That's going to be a dirty 20. All right. He's like, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, come over. This guy's kind of like half passed out. Why don't you uh, bring him around? All right. I can do that. Uh, who, who, who is this? I need to get some family history. What kind of doctor are you? You're here. A good one. <laughs> Just rousing the victim I'm torturing here, you know, come on. A good one. I need to know what kind of what kind of thing he might be allergic to so I don't accidentally kill him so you can't rough him up anymore. Don't you want to have I, the honor of killing him when it's time? Well, yeah, you know, that's what the boss wants. But like listen, so I uh I don't know much about his family history or whatever, but he's uh He's that painter guy that the boss wanted me to take. So I took him, I brought him here, and I've been torturing him for, uh, you know, a couple of hours now. Ah, oh, you see, now that's perfect information because painter guys, they're allergic to acetone. So I need to know to keep away from acetone. See, that's perfect information. Thank you very much. Yeah, 
uh, I guess that makes sense. You know, you do whatever you got to do. And when he's back up, you know, you let me know. I'm going to go uh, just wash my hands off. You know, I got some blood. Yeah, you go do that. I'll go with you. heads. Yeah, uh, you, uh, alligator lady, what do you, what's your story here? Uh, you with the doctor? You work for the boss? I, uh, keep my mouth shut, because you can't make a deception check if you don't say anything, and I put on the pair of sunglasses that I acquired recently, (laughs) and I just put them on my face, (laughs) and I say nothing. Ah, you like one of them silent guys, huh? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, uh, you know. How long you've been walking with, working with the boss? I just follow him out of the room. Nah, nah, I'm staying in the room. I'm just going over to this side of it here where I got like a little sink and a place I can wash up, you know? Oh, okay. Get the blood off in case I'm going back out into Nicomoy. You know, I already got the sky. I look pretty scary to people. So, you know. I don't want to go out with, like, blood and shit, because then people get all like, oh, wow, it's Tony, he's got blood in the sky, let's get away from him, man. Oh, yeah, I wash my hands off, too, there's blood on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a little on your mouth there, girl. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I wash my hands with him. All right, yeah, we're using soap. You know, I got this soap up at Mr. hands. it's pretty good, so they're, like, distracted now. Uh, they're washing their hands. Dr. Crow's going to grab Giuseppe and leave. Very quietly. Oh. (laughs) Um. (laughs) Yeah, actually, I like this plan. Tanager's going to cast Pass Without a Trace on Dr. Crud, Olive, Giuseppe, and himself. And then just, like, quietly, like, back out of the room. Uh, is there any... So, path remind me of Pass Without a Trace. Uh, I believe it's plus 10 to all stealth rolls. Oh, 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 oh. So, I'm stealthy behind Tony? Mm-hmm. And there's a torturing chair recently vacated? Mm-hmm. I flip that dude into it and slap him in. Buckle. Oh, well, all right. Make, um, make an attack. Well, uh, I guess if you're going to slap him into it, that would be a grapple. And I'm going to go ahead and say that he is surprised because he is, you know, washing his face and his hands down in the sink, running water. You know, he can't really hear great because of the water running. And so as these folks are stealthily exiting, you try to grapple and throw him. Yeah, into the chair, and uh, right. I guess is that athletics or acrobatics or I don't know what grappling. I don't know how to do that. Um, grappling is an athletics check based uh, against the strength of the other person, and then if you want to like throw him, I think we'll have to. Yeah, well, let's just see if we grapple him first, okay? Okay, sixteen. I took proficiency in this way back at level one because I was like, you know, your dex fighter people can make you do strength stuff, so. 16. <laughs> All right. So he, um, you are able to grapple him. You have him pinned. He's, you, he's bent over the sink, like splashing water on his face. And you grab him from behind. And like what? You've got him in like a headlock, I guess. Yeah. And yeah, you got him in a headlock. And he's like, hey, hey, what are you doing to me? Alligator lady. What the hell? And I force him into the torture chair. I buckle him in. Uh, all right, so you buckle him into the to the chair. He's like, "Hey, yo, this is my torture chair. What are you doing here?" <laughs> I just laugh. Okay. <laughs> he, he's he's upset. He's he's trying to get out of his torture chair. <laughs> well, that's not gonna work. <laughs> oh wow, he's upset. Imagine that. <laughs> oh, it's almost like torturing is a really rude thing to do to people, huh, Tony? Oh. <laughs> I thought you left, Tanager. Uh, 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 what? Tanager, <laughs> Dr. Crud the Third. You got it, Olive? Yep. Come here. Uh, cool. So I'm going to kick, like, kick over the chair so it's like backs on the ground and do that thing, like, from Big Daddy where you have the big thing of spit above him. And be like, yeah, how do you like being tortured? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's weird. I'd never spit on somebody. Kind of freak of you. What's up with that kitty mask, huh? It's not a mask. It's very cool face paint, and all the cool kids got it. I waited in line at the cotton candy factory like with, like, six kids in front of me. 
And he was like, oh, no way. Did they have that cod candy that tastes like pink lemonade? They did. And I even have some. And I'm not giving you any. No. Oh, I'm just man. getting this hopes What's that up. about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look at me. I'm torturing now, guys. Look at me go. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, there's only one way you get out of this with all of your teeth intact. Everything. Don't eat cotton candy. It's bad for your teeth. Yeah, we're going to rot them out, dude. Your dentist pills are going to be through the roof. Hey, no, I take my oral hygiene like wicked serious, so if you could not do that, that would be great. We force feed you cotton candy. If it's the pink lemonade kind, I'm okay. No, it's the green one. <laughs> oh, sour apple. That's bullshit. <laughs> uh, for real, though, uh, tell us everything about your boss or I'm going to straight up kick you in the head. Hey, easy there, goat man. All right? Yeah. Look, you want to make this worth my while? Maybe I remember some stuff about my boss. Uh, otherwise, you know, maybe I don't. I take out the pink lemonade cotton candy that Tanager gave me earlier. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking more like m like money. I think you, you got some gold on you guys. You have a gross misunderstanding of who is in the power position in this conversation <laughs> right now. Well, I mean, like what? You kick my teeth in and then you don't know about anything else about what's going on about my boss. And 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 what? I mean, so I get new teeth. All right, start shoving the cotton candy in. Um, is Giuseppe okay? Does he need like a spear of the dying or anything? Um, he's he's roused when um, Doctor Crud picked him up. He he's awake. He's got um, he's low hit points, but he's he's okay. And no longer in danger because Doctor Crud and him are gone. Oh, you yeah. didn't come back. Oh, he Doctor Crud did not like the sound of what was going to go on in there, so he was getting the heck, getting them the heck out of there. <laughs> That's weird for a person who slashes paintings and teaches your child to punch people to bone saw people uh, to unconsciousness. Non lethally bone saw people. Uh, he 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 never did bone saw it in front of her. Thank you very much. She was on your person. Okay, all right. So, <laughs> and he's never tortured. We aren't torturing, we're restraining and spinning, we're torturing. All right, so, um... Oh, like, we're bullying this guy, not torturing him. Yeah, yeah, there's a term for this. Yeah, so we we sit his chair back up, and I, I lean my alligator frame against the wall with my sunglasses on and arms crossed across my chest, and I let Tanager take it. But I do whisper to Tanager, remember, we're the good guys. Yeah, he's just really making me mad, you know, he's... Tony guy really knows how to get under my fur. He really does. Don't let him do that to you. You're the good guy, Tanager. I mean, the mission's done. Like, we saved Giuseppe. Like, this is just more cleanup, making sure that, like, whatever... I mean, I don't understand their scheme. Why involve these washermen? It's a bit weird. Yeah. yeah. That's, I, I mean, it's, it's really all I want to know. I mean, we're going to get paid. Job's done. But, like... I, just, I don't want this happening again to another artist in like a week and then we have to come back and it's like. They're probably distracted by their house being burning down. Yeah. Well, is that guy uh, even in charge when I was talking? Yes. Let's find out. All right. So you take this. I'm going to lean against the wall. Cool. You got this. Menacingly? Yeah. Menacingly. Just remember that you're the good guy. All right. Don't 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 torture. <laughs> I wasn't going to torture him. <laughs> um, I do give him a pink belly, though. <laughs> no, uh, f okay, gold, you want to talk coin, that'll conjunct this point. How much to open those lips? All right, well, first of all, I'm going to need you to let me out after, and uh, I'm going to need, let's see, he's paying me 800, so, give me a thousand gold, we'll call it a day, huh? Come on, clip clop, buddy. Nope, Olive, this is where this guy lives now. <laughs> Just leave him locked up. I, I, I'm, 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 we're getting paid 200 for this job, dude. That's way... How about 15 gold? <laughs> he just laughs. He's like, nah, I ain't gonna do it. I ain't... Nah, the boss, he, you know, I'd have to leave if I double-crossed him. I'd be out of Nicomoy, and I got a pretty good clientele here now. Oh, clientele for what? 
you know, you need to get rid of somebody, you call me. Hmm, interesting. All right, enough playing games. I drop a detect thoughts and I'm going in this guy's brain. He makes a wisdom saving throw. Whoa. All right. (laughs) (laughs) What's the spell, DC? I believe it's 14. All right, he is, he rolled a 12. So he is, you are burrowing into his brain. Whoa. Your brain is mine, fool. And I'm doing way too much. Um... Okay. I gain insight into its reasoning, its emotional state, and something that looms larger than its mind, something that it loves, hates, worries about. Um, yeah, and verbal saying things shapes what he thinks about. So I'm just going to be like, all right, who's your boss? I'm in your brain. All right, so his he does work for um, Lord Bartleby. Why did Lord Bartleby have you disappear the painting man? So I'm going to, so in, in his head, he's sort of talking to you. We'll we'll do it like that. Mm. So I can do the voice. Um, So he says, Hey, you know, uh, I don't ask like too many questions, but it was some kind of painting that he was all like up in arms about or whatever. And so he was like, yo, go get the painter. So I brought him back. You know, it's like, my line of work, you don't ask a lot of questions, you know? Hmm. You just kind of bump what needs bumping. How long were you planning on torturing him for? Like, how do you know you were finished? Oh, we were trying to figure out how we did this with the painting, you know? Where's the painting now? It's in the back with the boss's statue. Hmm. And that statue's, like, definitely a golem, right? No, oh, I don't know about magic, but the thing moves around and it's pretty weird. <sighs> All right, um, all of you have any questions? I think I'm done with this guy. Did you bump Lord Bartleby Sr. off? Uh, was was he the guy who ran the flower shop, or was he like a boat guy? Your boss's dad. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess he didn't like him or something, you know. That's a yes on that? Yeah, yeah, you know, eh, they all run together, though. I'm sorry, you know, it was a flower guy, too. How is Mr. Tan? Flower guy, too. Flower guy. Is is your boss just having you bump off people who cause him minor inconveniences? Nah, nah, no, the flower guy was something else. I I got confused for a sec there. (laughs) Uh, That was a different client. You're just, yeah, you just kill people for money. I got it. You know, it's like if I asked you guys, hey, what adventure did you go on? You'd be like, ah, which one do you mean? That's what it's like for me, you know? Come on. Yeah. Hey, true facts. All right, yeah. I'm going to use an... I, I push myself against the wall by unfolding my arms and pushing them behind me. And I take out from my waist bracers... Uh, what are they called? Dimensional shackles. I use an action to place these shackles on an incapacitated creature. They adjust to fit. In addition to serving as mundane manacles, they prevent a creature bound by them from using any method of extra-dimensional movement, including teleportation, unless they, like, walk through a portal. You and any creature I designate when I use the shackle, which I guess is uh, Olive Tanager at this point, can use an action to remove them. Once every 30 days, the bound creature can make a DC 30 strength athletics check. On a success, the creature breaks free and destroys the shackle. Other than that, you're stuck here, so I'm going to lead them handcuffed. Out of the sewers, because I think this one needs to go to the cops. Tanager? Yeah, uh, (laughs) bring him to the cops. Under magical interrogation, he'll definitely hand over Bartleby. And then, uh, I guess the only other thing is, how is Mr. Tan involved in all this? So, while you guys are pondering that, I'm going to do a meanwhile to Dr. Crud, who is running away with (laughs) Giuseppe. (laughs) Honestly, like, someone should. I'm glad. Go Dr. Crud. Good yeah. thinking. Yeah, uh, we get back up to the surface. Uh, Dr. Crud's going to leave his auto drone there, tape a note to it, and then take him home. To his house, or? To 73 Dr. Crud is awesome lane. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, it's a Dr. Crud act, a two-minute quest in lane. Look, you say it how you say it, I say it how I say it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a, you're a nice elephant. It's okay. It's okay. Take me home. Now let's go get our five-star review. 
Yeah. <laughs> and and the, the, the note says, Olive, Tanny Boy, went to drop this guy at home. See you there. Cool. All right. Um, you're, you're able to reach his house, and you drop him off, and his wife is ecstatic. His son is, you know, jumping for joy and hugging him and his father, and, and he says, oh... Uh, this, uh, I don't know how I'm ever going to repay you for this. Uh, this was a, a, a daring rescue of me in the sewer, and thank, oh, I don't know. I think I might have given up painting. Well, can you do one more? Dr. Craig brings Jenny out. We're ready for our close-up, Mr. DeVille. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I will do one of all of the fire-breathing kittens. We do it like a Last Supper kind of style thing. All right, we'll wait. <laughs> okay, it's a good, it's a good, yes. I capture your pure essence. You got some tea while we wait on my friends? Stefani goes, oh, yes, I make you tea. Come on, come back in the back. I make a little roast of water. You want something to eat? I have a lasagna. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. All right, so you guys, as you're eating, uh, we'll go back to our the sewer crew. Sewer gang, what up? Yo. <laughs> Um, what are you guys doing? So you've got this shackled guy in his dimensional shackles. You're in his torture room. There's a, a door. Um, actually, there's three exits to this room. Two to the east and one to the west. Take him to the cops? Yeah, I, I think we're chilling. Um, we should take a peek in that office. Like, just maybe we can just grab the painting and run. The ghoul will chase us, but like, whatever. We're both pretty fast. But we don't need the the painting okay i just feel weird leaving it here like there's something there's something i don't know something's fishy and it's not just dr crud's jerky <laughs> yeah the boss is a changeling who replaced the heir and hired tony to kill the senior and tony will admit to that you're right we should get the painting Mm-hmm. Mm, i see what you're saying okay Tony, don't go nowhere. <laughs> Secure him to the chair. <laughs> He's like, hey, whatever you want, crocodile lady. Um, maybe I'll see you in the streets one day and make you in the shoes. I punch him in the face. <laughs> I didn't like where that sentence was going, and I wasn't about to let him finish it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> he, wasn't being he wasn't being creepy. He was just saying he'd make her into shoes. Either way, I don't like that's not much better. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, but he wasn't, like, sexualizing the crocodile. I, 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 it sounded not? like I was going to say that. <laughs> Are you intimidated by her physique? <laughs> no, for real, we got... Yeah, you know, kind of, because she's, like, she's pretty big. Uh, I am going Can't to... Oh, yeah, elucidate him on all <laughs> okay. the things he's wrong about while Olive can investigate the painting. Yeah, okay, um... I'm out of dust of disappearance, but I'm going to try to sneak into the painting room. Um, okay. So, um, Tony tells you that to, to go down the, the West corridor. Yeah, I do. I've got a 27, which is not bad. Was that with the plus 10? 37. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not. So, like, you can sneak, but, like, if you just walk in plain sight, like... Oh, no, no. I walk on the ceiling because of my uh, unarmored movement improvement. I can run on vertical surfaces and on liquids. <laughs> I'm sorry. I never heard the liquid part. <laughs> so, so you can run on the ceiling? I can because I possess two... It's amongst us. Immovable rods, so as I stop moving, I click the button, and then that keeps me from falling. Uh, okay. Move, click, move, click. So you you stealthily click down the hallway. Yeah, there's no sound associated with the button, but I feel like there should be, but yeah. Okay, so you, you very stealthily move down the hallway, and as you turn the corner into the next room, you see it's still a sewer, but it's definitely got... It's like the nicest part of this sewer that you've seen so far. There's a couple of tapestries on the wall. There's like a small uh, desk and a chair. There's a, a nice-ish bed. I mean, you know, it's still in the sewer. Uh, and there's the painting is on the on an easel, just kind of propped up in the corner. 
Perception check for statue person. Yes, there is a statue person oh. in the room. Yeah. And he is staring at the painting. Hmm. I take a small bit of the ceiling, like I'll, I'll crack some of it off, or a, if that doesn't work, then I'll take one of my torches. I have nine left. And I throw it in the direction opposite of the door and the painting and myself. So the the statue kind of looks up and then it tries to look that way without taking its eye off the painting. So it's like trying to do like a peripheral check and it's like, because they interpret, remember, golems interpret their their instructions quite literally. So he's looking at the paint, never leaves eye contact with the painting, but sort of tries to look over it. He can't quite do it. I go back to Tanager and I tell him what I saw. Oh, I, I totally forgot. I'm psychic. So <laughs> Tanner's just going to be like, get ready to run. And he's going to go to the doorway where the golem and the painting is within 30 feet. I can, I basically have mage hand. Uh, I'm oh, just okay. going to mage, yeah, mage hand it off and then run out the door. Does the door open um, outward like all true fire doors should? It, there's not really a door. Oh. It's just an, an entryway. It's the sewer, remember? Yeah. So, okay, you run you run down. Basically, I'm, you mage hand I'm, the painting away. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm not getting within melee attack range of the golem. No, the, the golem definitely, like, keeps, his, keeps looking at it the entire time and just starts, like, slowly plodding along behind it, like, following it, like, doop, 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 doop. Okay, yeah, let's book it. This I doubt this thing run. can Yeah, this thing can't catch up to us. I run. I have a fifty foot movement speed and I have a carrying capacity of Tanager. Mm-hmm. That's canon. So, so Tanager jumps on your back and you run? <laughs> yeah, I have um fifty feet movement speed and actually with three hundred and thirty pound carrying capacity I could probably carry What about your prisoner? Tony as well. Yeah, let's just mecha Shiva. All get on each other's shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, so I have um, a 45 speed, 45 feet movement speed if I'm over 330 pounds. How much do you weigh, Tanager? Uh, I, I don't, I don't think it's ever been disclosed and that's a little bit rude, but I'm f perfectly okay, okay. normal weight. Let's just assume, <laughs> let's just assume I'm at like 400 pounds if they're both 200 pounds with all their stuff and Tony doesn't have any stuff. I leave his stuff behind and I'm going to move at 45 feet per six seconds movement speed. And book it. And I'm going to use Step of the Wind. So I'm going to use my action, downgrade that to movement, use my movement. So that's 90 feet. And then I'm going to Step of the Wind seven times. No, I'm level 12 now. Nine times. <laughs> Which gives me an additional 45 movements speed per round as well. Run! Oh, yeah. that The golem is... Um, <laughs> yeah, he has, he has a speed of 30 feet. So you guys are... Just trying to calculate here. Uh, looking at my map. Yeah, you guys are way ahead. You've turned at least two corners by the time the golem is coming into the room, the torture room. Uh, so you guys are, are very, very quick. And the golem is still, you can still hear him walking, but you guys are going to outrun him uh, within a turn. Okay, so I'll spend another four key points just to make sure. And... <laughs> I, I won't spend all of my 12 key points, but I'll spend seven of my 12 key points total so far this adventure. And we run back towards Dr. Crud III, and I, we do know to go back to his house because of the note. You make it without uh, much of any event, uh, eventful things happening to you. you. You do hear, like, the stone golem sort of coming up through the sewer as you... Uh, as you leave and you know it's just sort of like breaking stuff but you guys are so far away that it, that it's he's he can't see you he can't find where you are in it, at this point and so once you make it back to uh you make it back to Giuseppe's house um on 73 Dr. Crud asked too many questions why uh i just want to also as we're running shout like golem on the loose everyone be careful <laughs> You, so like you're in half elf town and they're like oh, golem on the loose golem on the loose and they they yeah they, they sort of are running away and like he's in the apothecary no 
<laughs> our herbal remedies. I heard they sucked anyway. <laughs> well, they do. They do. Uh, cool, and then we'll get back to that. We should probably drop him off at the police station first so we don't have the guy who tortured Giuseppe <laughs> show up at his house. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. It's yeah, on the actually. way, so you drop him off at the local station. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with the painting, too, as evidence of the air replacement changeling killing the dad. Yeah, the detectives can figure it out from here. We pretty much yeah. teed it up for him. Our job is to torture and wake up people. Their job is to figure out the mysteries. <laughs> so as you guys are dropping this off, the painting off, you notice that the features of the face change as, as this happens. And you see it move from Lord Bartleby's face to a face you have not seen before. Because he paints their essence. So, like, if this dude really was, like, an imposter and he got painted, he painted the imposter, not the face he was wearing. That ex Is it a human face like a changeling would be? Yes, it is a human face like a changeling would be. So Sweet. it goes from Lord Bartleby to another human. It's not a changeling face, but it changes the way that would, and it goes to another human face. I think put another W in the books for FBK. Yeah. I feel kind of bad. I burned down the mansion of a... Well, I guess... I mean, they didn't have any... Are there any heirs? To, while I was reading the Who's Who book to the Bartleby lineage, who would be the next in line if Lord Bartleby was deceased? Oh, that would be his um, ailing sister who lived on the third floor of the house that you burnt down. Oh, problem solved. All right. And again, the will got messed with so i'm sure their like line of inheritance is all messed up the barristers are going to be having a field day with this one yeah yeah i'm gonna let them figure it out i'm not sure who survived the fire and who didn't and all that that sounds like lawyer work you know <laughs> we're not, not lawyers dude i'm just the arsonist we're adventurers work here it's done burn town how many people i killed <laughs> yeah. in the fire if I remembered how many people I've killed in my adventuring career, I would drink twice as much. <laughs> did I kill anybody, DM, in the fire? I uh, the the ailing sister did not get out of the fire. Oh yikes! Okay, I can revivify her. The butler was fine. Oh darn, that sucks. Um, okay, so I guess I would look up afterwards how many people I have to revivify. This is gonna cost all my money. Just, just her. She was, and well, and her nurse uh, has some burns, but. All right, Olive is gonna. Ugh. All right, Olive. There goes my money. No, um, Olive. So in Dungeons and Dragons, there's you can officially spend money to revive dead people. And where is my gold? Where is my gold? It's on here somewhere. Ah, oh, there it goes. Okay, I spend 7,000 gold Oof. to... Wow. <laughs> Goodbye. To revive. Right. I think that's enough money, right? You only need like five or something, or ten or something. I don't know, whatever. Oh, I'm, I'm sure we can get a, a reincarnate from a druid for like half that price. All right, I got a reincarnate from a druid. There goes the 7,000 gold. It's all good. I didn't kill anybody. This is, why right. this is why I need to keep working for the Fire Breathing Kittens, because I keep messing up, killing people, and losing all my savings. Gosh darn it. <laughs> all right. So you guys, um, you gave the painting to the police? Yeah. Or, um, okay. Probably, right? Because I doubt Giuseppe needs it back. Yeah. I think cops are the way to go. Yep. Okay. So you head back to Giuseppe's house, and he's there drinking tea and, and getting pampered by his wife. And Dr. Crud is there and the wife, uh, Stefania comes out and she says, Oh, I promised you this a gold. I give you a bag here, here. Who, who gets it? Olive. What? Okay. No, I'm not Olive. here. I'm, uh, I'm re I'm paying some oh. druids. <laughs> oh, oh, you went immediately. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so she gives you the money, and he promises to come uh, when he's fully recovered to paint a, a, a Last Supper-style portrait of all the fire-breathing kittens together in the guild hall. Yay. Yay. 
Well, did he enjoy your torture session, Tanny? I think it had more fun. Yeah. All right. Uh, also, Olive, just a little bit of accounting. You should only be out a grand. Oh, that's all it takes to revive people that have been dead for like a day? Uh, revivify is within one minute. Uh, it's not, it's res- not revivify. Resurrection yeah. is a diamond worth at least a thousand gold pieces, plus whatever the wizard would charge you for a seventh level spell. So you should have a, you know, it's probably like, what, like 2,000 maybe? Yeah. Oh, it's a seventh level spell. I think those are like 20,000. What? Okay, well, mm. <laughs> Tanner's just trying to look out for your wallet. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, DM, tell me later how much debt I'm in, because Olive's in debt from this. Oh. Let's let's call it 12K and... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay, all right. I'm 5K in debt. What a great adventure. <laughs> to, to a sorcerer. <laughs> or wizard. Druid. Why would any magic user be an adventurer when you can just yeah, make just... <laughs> boku bucks? Because you have to reach a level that can cast a seventh level spell. You still got to grind that XP. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So anything else right. you want to do? <laughs> I think we should do our wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This has been another exciting episode of the Fire Breathing Kittens. Today, joining us, we had Tanager. Tanager Goodfellow, happy to be here, happy to work. Olive. <laughs> the look on his face after he said that. I don't know what that was. <laughs> That's okay, I killed a lady and then brought her back, sending myself into debt. Tanager emphatically hates working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Olive? Bye. And Kenny Crud. You do realize that legally changing your name means that that la- old name no longer applies. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> no arsons. <laughs> <laughs>Are you looking for a new podcast where celebrities interview celebrities or exhaustively talk about shows they used to be on? Well, you're in luck. There are lots of those out there. But if you're looking for something fun, fresh, and hilarious, check out our show, History Defeats Itself, part of the Sonar Network of Podcasts. Join along as three guys that fell asleep during history class bring you a comedy podcast about their quest for meaning. Each episode, we dive into a single topic that will range from the mundane to the fascinating. Only one of us does the research, and the other two have no idea what the topic is going to be until it's revealed on the show. In every episode, we will trace the origin, discuss the present-day impact, and attempt to forecast the future, all in an effort to determine if our subject has been a success or if it's another example of how history defeats itself. Join our growing community of Mistorians and download History Defeats Itself today wherever you get your podcasts. Do you eat or drink soup? What would happen if Batman got bitten by a vampire? What happens when you get scared half to death twice? Do you need to know the answers to these important questions? Then join me, Jim. And me, Jeff. For the Wondering Worm podcast. Every fortnight we answer questions posed to us by our listeners. Every journey we're on a new adventure where we pick new questions to apply our pineapple soaked minds to. Or is there something that you need to know that your world just can't answer? The only thing friendlier than an intergalactic space worm is two intergalactic space worms. So come and ride the roller coaster. Worms out.